call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the Committee of Adjustment meeting of July 9th, 2019. My name is Ron Chatta, Committee Chair. Uh, this is a meeting of Committee of Adjustment. The Committee of Adjustment is composed by five citizen members who are appointed by the Brampton City Council. The Committee is authorized by the Ontario Planning Act to consider applications for minor variances from the provision of the City of Brampton zoning bylaw. The Committee also considered applications for consent sometime referred to as land division applications, which include severing a new lot, a new lot from an existing lot, a lot addition, easement, mortgages, or leases in excess of 21 years. To my immediate, uh, uh, I would like to introduce the committee members. To my immediate left, member uh, Desiree Dorfler. To my, far, uh, uh, to my far left, member Rod Power. Uh, we're, uh, member Anna Christina Marcus uh, should be here, uh, maybe in any moment. Uh, and, uh, and member uh, Mr. David Cope uh, sends his regrets uh, uh, for today's meeting. Uh, seated at the table in front of the committee, Ms. Jeannie Myers, Secretary Treasurer of the Committee of Adjustment. And seated near the podium, we have the city staff who will assist the committee today. I would now ask uh, one of the staff members to make the staff introduction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Elizabeth Corazola. I'm the manager of zoning and side bylaw services. Good morning, Mr. Chair. My name is Bernie Steiger, manager of development services. Uh, David Vandenberg, central area planner. And Shannon Doyle, development planner. Thank you. Before we consider today's uh, applications, the committee has some procedural matter to take care of. Uh, the first is adoptions of the minutes. The meeting held on June 18, 2019. Uh, the minutes of the previous meeting uh, has been presented in today's agenda. Committee members, any question or concern? For the minutes? If not, uh, seeking a motion to approve these minutes. Motion by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Offer. All in favor? The next item we have is a declaration of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Uh, so does any member have any declaration of pecuniary interest to declare on any matter being discussed today? Seeing none. Now we move on to uh, withdrawals and deferrals. Uh, we do have some written requests, but beside that, uh, is anybody, any application being presented here today, has any, uh, anyone wants to have a deferral request or the withdrawal request? Sir, one second, your application is? Okay, you can come forward, no problem. Your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Dave Kapil. My address is uh, 67 Main Street South, Okay. Uh, Brampton, Ontario. Um, city had requested, staff had requested a deferral for this particular application due to assessment. Um, they accept it. You can proceed further, please. Okay, committee members, any question or concern at this point? Because then we have some correspondence I would like to bring on record, but uh, so far any staff, how would you like to deal with? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the staff recommendation had been to defer the application, both the variance and the consent, until the applicant submits the heritage impact assessment with the deferral not to exceed a period of one year. So is there any uh, time frame we are suggesting? Uh, we are leaving it open. We are saying a maximum time frame of one year mm -hmm. for the deferral. Um, but if the applicant submits the heritage impact assessment before that, it could be brought back to the committee. So the maximum one year, that's what we are suggesting yes. at this point, right? OK, I have some written. Uh, 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 do you understand and accept? Staff? Yes, yes, I do. OK. <laughs> Uh, I have some written correspondence uh, from some concerned neighbors. Is there anyone present here uh, for, uh, for this application? Any member, neighborhood, any concerned neighbor? Okay, uh, you can come here, but uh, you can come and uh, give your name and address for the record so you will be included in the future uh, correspondence. But uh, keep in mind, uh, you can have your concern, but we are not reviewing this application. 
uh, in this particular time, we will be, uh, our committee will be deciding whether we are going ahead with this application today or we are giving them a future date. Okay, so you are more than welcome to come one by one and uh, give your name and address for the record. I'm good to go? Yeah, me. please. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Alan McClelland, uh, and uh, we did submit a letter. Uh, my your address, please? It's 66 Elizabeth Street South. Okay. And uh, your concerns? Our concerns are outlined in the letter, but we believe the uh, request, the applications are um, are not consistent with the city's official plan. Um, I, actually, I, I do question whether this application should be in front of your committee, because I, I do question whether it's a minor variance or not. I well, think the development is inappropriate for the neighborhood. This committee looks after the severance uh, applications. So if any time anyone is requesting a severance or sever wants to sever a lot, so this is the committee, uh, according to the Municipal Act, uh, comes to not, like even in this municipality or any other municipalities, as far as my, my knowledge is, but uh, you are more than welcome to express your concerns. Uh, so we have your letter already, and our Secretary Treasurer is making sure you are uh, included in the correspondence. Okay. Uh, if we uh, if we proceed to go ahead with this application today, you can come back, and uh, you can give your concerns in detail. So, could could you clarify the process for me, please? Are you so the the committee still has the option to deal to deal with the, the application today? Committee still has the options. Uh, so, at this point, uh, the owner made this application between the owner and the staff, our city staff. Uh, is suggesting a future date because they are waiting for, as they mentioned, uh, heritage, uh, uh, the comments from the heritage impact assessment, which the city does not have yet. So till we have all the comments, uh, most of the time, or this is a standard procedure, the committee makes the decision or they come to an, uh, a final result only the based on when all parties, uh, like we got, uh, we got the comments from uh, all the departments. So does the committee have the authority to accept or decline yes. the application yes. today? Yes, today, yeah. Okay, and it will be dealt with today or, or the third option might be to defer it as recommended by staff? Yes. So it's those three options that you're, yeah. will be yeah. okay. All, all options are open. Uh, it's uh, depend on the majority of the committee, how the committee likes to deal with this application. Whether it's today or any timeline they want to add. And then uh, I will be reading my uh, uh, further, uh, uh, I would say, script, where anyone who is not happy with the decision can appeal in next 20 days. They, there's appeal period for the decision. I will be reading that okay. after. But the intent still to deal with this on the agenda then? At the yes, moment. that's why we are talking here, sir. Great, thank you. Welcome. Next, please. Your name and address <coughs> for the record. Good morning, Dan Zarko. Uh, my address is 72 Elizabeth Street South. I'm mm -hmm. exactly immediately uh, right, uh, uh, right where the, from the proposed property would be. And of uh, all well, the two houses on the street were most uh, impacted by this uh, house. And when you look at the sketch, it's a, we call it a monster house. Mm -hmm. And I do mean that genuinely, like that the blue house in North on near Kennedy Street, north of Brampton there, it would be a monster house, totally out of place for the neighborhood. Uh, our backyard would be a complete brick wall. If you look at the sketch, it's right there, and it would be probably like a three, two, three-story house. So our concerns for the area, again, doesn't match the neighborhood character. My house and the neighbor's house, and all the houses in the neighborhood are probably 100, ours are is over 100 years old, and probably all the houses are 100 years old. They're not built with the waterproofing technology we have today. So a new house in there with waterproofing technology and disturbing the, the ground will affect drainage, and the ability for the ground to absorb all the water will impact all the surrounding houses. And that house would be fine because it's new, but ours wouldn't be. And the drainage is not perfect because it was designed over 100 years ago. So we're concerned with that, especially the last winter with all the extra ice and snow built up. 
drainage could be bad, it could be impact a lot of the houses in the neighborhood and without having to do serious construction to upgrade all those houses too, so they wouldn't leak. Um, <coughs> also, the, the sketch leaves very limited land around the house for mm -hmm. snow. Where, where are they gonna put it? It's all gonna be piled up inside their area, I don't know, or pushed onto the street, or they have to pay for <coughs> removal costs, so that would also impact the area. Um, <coughs> Also, the house is set back between far from Elizabeth Street and Main Street. And the driveway is like uh, uh, 18 feet wide. So I have concerns about uh, emergency vehicles. How will they get to the house if there's a fire, if there's something? And if it's a big house, there's going to be multiple cars taking up the rest of the location. How are emergency vehicles going to get in there to stop the spread of fire to surrounding heritage homes in this uh, uh, neighborhood? And lastly, if parking's an issue, where are they going to put all these cars? So it would turn into a parking lot. Uh, so the backyard for my house, my neighbor's house, and the surrounding neighbors would be looking at cars and a solid brick wall in the, the neighborhood. And it would totally ruin the character. And I just recently purchased the property because we love the area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> plenty of privacy, plenty of mature trees. All that would disappear. So when we finally got this, we were like, oh, this is horrible. This is not what we had intended. And I'm sure most of the people in the area... Um, see this neighborhood as, the, I call it the gem of all of Brampton. You know, we can see uh, the number that. of correspondence letter we received and the number of people showed here. Uh, you know, definitely that's a, we can see there's a concern. Okay. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, before the previous gentleman came, uh, the first uh, business is uh, the committee is going to decide whether uh, this uh, application we are reviewing today okay. or in the future date. So uh, for any future correspondence, as I mentioned, anyone who have sent the letter. Mm -hmm. uh, and you do have my letter? I just want to confirm you got my letter. Okay. So how about this? Uh, I'm going to read all the letters uh, we received. Mm -hmm. And if anyone else uh, wishes to come forward, they can come, if you, if, if you allow me to. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm done. So <laughs> we have some concerned letters from uh, uh, 78 Elizabeth Street South. Uh, also, this one is from 77 Elizabeth Street South, uh, 76 Elizabeth Street South. Uh, nice presentation with objection. Uh, 72 Elizabeth Street South. Uh, 66 Elizabeth Street South. I think the gentleman was there, yeah. I have your letter, sir. Uh, 72 Elizabeth Street South. And this is 65 Main Street South. 70 Elizabeth Street South. And this is 75 Elizabeth Street South. Uh, the one we have 73 Main Street South. And also we have, uh, we have a uh, letter from Toronto and Region Conservation Authority uh, recommending conditional approval. The applicant submit confirmation to the TRCA that the right of way easement is registered on title and that access to the proposed right of way from the proposed retained parcel will be maintained open and free of any encumbrances. So these are uh, the correspondence uh, we have received. Um, oh, sorry, this is one uh, another strongly object uh, sent by. Let me just read the address: 71 Main Street South. So these are the letters of opposition from the concerned neighbors uh, we have received. Uh, anybody else from the neighborhood? Wishes to speak on this application? Would you like us all to go up? I mean, now you have all our So all, if, if all of your letters are here, we have uh, on record, uh, I have included. If anyone is missing or any uh, anyone sent the letter and realized that I did not pronounce their address, so we are more than welcome to come. And even still, if your letter is here, you wish us to add something, you are more than welcome to uh, come uh, at the front. Good morning. Good my morning. name is uh, Cindy Meisner on behalf of my mother, 64 Elizabeth Street South. 
Okay. Did you send the letter? Uh, or no? Uh, no, we were okay. too late on the timeline. No problem. But uh, she certainly, we as a family certainly want to be involved in the process and keep us updated, you know, with the beautiful environment we have, the trees. Um, we choose to live in this community and in the gem of the area. So if you can keep us informed, we would sure. be against that. And just one, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, in just one simple word, if you can please, uh, I, I assume you are in opposition of this uh, proposed yes. application. Yes, opposition, okay. thank no you. Problem. <laughs> Through the chair, if I could ask the speaker to spell the last name. please, can you please spell your last name? Yes, it's for Jean McLaughlin, M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, 64 Elizabeth Street South. And for the chair, do you need the spelling of the last name of the speaker? Please, last name. And my name is Cindy Meisner, M-E-I-S-N-E-R. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishes to add? Please come forward, sir. Hello. Uh, my name is Claudio Texera. I'm the owner of the property at 70 Elizabeth Street South, which is a property, property directly west of, of 67 Main Street South. Uh, I did submit a letter. Uh, with a number of concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you read those. Um, my, my question is the reason why we're here. Uh, and one of the points that I mentioned in my letter was the due diligence. I don't feel that due dil diligence was, was done in this case. Uh, so being here today and finding out that it's being deferred is, is concerning. <laughs> is this typical of the process? Sorry, uh, your comment, uh, due diligence, uh by the property owner or city staff or? By both, by both. Okay. Because it sounds like there hasn't been enough thought put into what we're doing, in, what they're doing in that property. So I'm concerned that we're here today. Uh, we've, we've presented our, our, our points why we're objecting to it. Uh, but it's, it, it sounds like it's more of a takeaway for the owner. Is, is that the case? Okay. Anything else you wish us to add? Yes, I'd like to also add that we live on Elizabeth Street South. I think it's it's an iconic street for yep. Brampton. Um, and all the homes on Elizabeth Street South front Elizabeth Street South. And I think they contribute to what the street is right now. Um, based on the location of the property, there's no way that I can see, based on the setbacks and the location of the homes, that that would be possible. Uh, it may be, maybe there is other solutions to it, but I think that's one of the things that makes the street unique is the presentation to the street. Uh, and you see that along Elizabeth Street on several occasions where there's actually houses that have been set back, but they still present to the street. I think that's important. Uh, if there is severance to the property, I, I also want to mention is on the maintenance and building side of things. Uh, if there, it's severed, does that mean that the property can be sold at a, little, at a later time? Is that the understanding? Would that happen? Sorry, say that again. If if the property is severed, mm -hmm. can it be sold separately at a later time? I believe yes, but uh, yeah. So I think a lot of the concerns that would happen is 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 if that's agreed to, then we're just kicking the issues down the road. So I don't believe that it should be. I think that's itemized in my letter. Sure. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Your name and address for the record? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Edo Van Belkem. It's E-D-O. Van Belkem is small V-A-N space capital B-E-L-K-O-M is in Michael. I've submitted a letter and I think uh, all my concerns are uh, echoed by the rest of the uh, constituents and uh, people in the neighborhood. Um, if, the only thing I want to add, if this is going to be deferred, can I ask that uh, there be a uh, uh, a visit by forestry from the city to ask uh, how that might impact if the lot is severed and there has to be clearance to the uh, setback and how that might affect and, and if you can actually cut down trees that are in the setback because uh, there's such little area that's clear at the moment much of the, the bush on the west side is going to have to be cut down and just like to have some input from forestry if you're going to defer it for the next meeting, I'd like to see a report from forestry. 
Okay, maybe staff can comment on this. Yeah, through Mr. Chairman, I think the applicant, or not, the speaker raised a good point, and we would like to amend our condition, our recommendation for deferral to um, to add a tree preservation report that is be required Thank you. By, from the applicant. Sure, sure. Anybody else? Through I, the chair, um, through the chair, if I can get Mr. Van Bilken's um, address. Sir, 77. 77? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? I have seen uh, lots of uh, people from the neighborhood came. It's really hard to come, especially on the weekday, and I want to thank them for taking their time and bringing their concern to the committee. Uh, staff, uh, would you, uh, as you mentioned, you would like to add uh, another uh, condition if uh, we are going ahead with the deferral? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The staff would like to add the tree preservation report to the required studies to be submitted by the applicant in addition to the heritage impact assessment noted in the report. And those are really necessary for us to do our due diligence in the review of this application. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it's not to exceed a period of one year. So uh, before I go to that one, uh, committee members, any question or concern at this point? Saying none. Uh, to the property owner, as you have uh, seen, uh, that uh, staff is uh, requesting some additional information. Are you understand and accept? Yes, we're fine with that. Uh, okay. If I can make a comment, is it okay? Sure. Um, to my beautiful neighbors, uh, if I was you, I'd be freaking out as well. Uh, I want you to know something about me. I'm a very loyal brand. I respect tremendously our neighborhood, especially the political seat in Main Street. This area is my, my heart. Uh, if you go and check on the organization called New Brampton, they'll find out what I stand for. You'll find out a lot about me. Um, we have no intention. I would like to request you, when you address anything, just please Sorry talk to me, okay. not directly to the. Fair enough. Um, so we would like to, uh, I just want to mention to you that uh, it'll be nice if you just pass me your telephone numbers after the meeting so I can contact each one of you, address everybody's concern, because I'm confident when I'm done with it, the area will be much better as well. Um, I have no intentions of building a <coughs> monster home there. We want to make a nice home, which we're working with the staff. We ask staff as to what they like and uh, what goes nicely with that area. We are working with the... Uh, heritage assessment people to recommend us what goes nicely in that area. So I, I really want to improve the area, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So just be patient with me, um, uh, listen to what I have to say, and I'll be happy to sit on each one of you individually, explain what we're doing, and we go from there. So if I have a, <coughs> if I have a contact information that'll really help me, just make it easy, uh, so we can contact everyone and address their concerns. We, uh, and then, you know, you do it what you want. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I already included all the letters uh, came forward to us. Uh, but uh, once we make the decision, if uh, it, it's uh, we cannot enforce that, that share the information. It's up to them, to all the concerned neighbors, uh, what they are if they are outside sharing the information with you, and if they have any concern or if they are asking, this is their wish. Yeah, but, that's but, why. But, but uh, to you think you made a valid point that you know uh, any information you are willing to provide, which is always helpful for not only these concerned neighbors, for anybody, uh, they always come to any of these uh, city meetings. Because many of those concerns, we definitely, with more information, it does help of course. to any of those, uh, uh, those uh, terms. So uh, committee members, if no question or concern, we have this application to deal with. Staff is recommending uh, deferral, uh, uh, not more than one year, with uh, two conditions. One is uh, heritage impact assessment, and the second is tree preservation report. So I hope I'm not missing anything. So Ms. Myers, if we are going, for example, uh, when you are anyone, any of the committee members is putting forward uh, this uh, recommendation, uh, sorry, I mean the deferral, motion, uh, it has to be a date or just one year is enough? Um, through the chair, it does not necessarily have to be date specific. Um, planning staff are recommending that it not exceed a period of one year. 
with the applicant being able to bring the application back earlier if staff receive the necessary reports as recommended and requested of the applicant. So if you do specify uh, that it be deferred not more than one year, the applicant has the ability to come back at an earlier date. But if, if uh, we don't have any communication from the applicant, I would list it on an agenda within by the, the end of the year. By the end of the year. We don't have a specific date at this point because our schedule doesn't take us that far. Mm -hmm. However, this application would have to be heard no later than the same time frame in July of 2020. Sure. Uh, and uh, just uh, for all the concerned neighbors, uh, if let's say uh, the applicant comes within six to seven months time and bring all these reports, how we are going to notify through the mail, I believe, just to uh, these individuals who submit their concerns or the entire neighborhood, uh, we go by the radius. Yeah, through the chair, um, I would uh, recirculate public notices reflective of a new hearing date um, to all people that are property owners within a certain radius, and that would include also anyone that spoke here today and presented their concerns or support in writing. So all of the neighbors that spoke today would receive a future notification. Uh, anyone that provided comments in writing that are not here today would also receive future communication, as well as any neighbors that didn't attend or send anything in writing. Those neighbors would also be recirculated. Okay, sure. So as you already mentioned to the applicants, you are understand and in agreement. So committee members, what we are doing here, are we, uh, as anyone is willing to propose something, any, any question, concern, if not, looking for a motion, whether we are going to deal with this application today or we are going to, as we are missing two assessment reports, if uh, we are uh, going by one year, uh, uh, not to exceed a period of one year time frame. Through you, Mr. Chair, I would just ask the applicant, um, can you provide this information sooner than one year? Is it um, a matter of a few months? It's something, uh, yeah, uh, we, we will probably have it uh, sooner than one year. Okay, so I'm just looking for an option to see if we can put a date to this. Oh, I, I can't because I have to contact. This is something, not something I do every day. This is the first time we're doing it. It's a house I'm building for myself for my retirement. And um, so I have to find out from heritage assessment guys. I don't know how long they take to do what they have to do and what the procedure is. I'm learning just like anybody else here. So I guess, uh, as Ms. Myers indicated, uh, by putting one year is not necessary one year. If uh, these two reports uh, the homeowner uh, can obtain prior to one year, they can simply come back to the committee and, and the city will notify to all the concerned neighbors. So I guess, uh, like uh, to, my, uh, to me, uh, not exceed a uh, period of one year is satisfactory and uh, I, so, it, so in that, so in that case, everyone will get uh, their uh, fair time to evaluate the situation. And sir, you want to add something? Yeah, go ahead. Please come have, forward. Do I have the ability to clarify a few things? Sure. Uh, Name and address again. Uh, I, my, uh, <coughs> my name is Alan McClelland at yeah. 66 Elizabeth Street South. Mm -hmm. And I, I just uh, wanted to clarify a few things that have been presented to the committee today. Um, Mr. Capil, you gave your address at 67 Main Street South, and I don't believe you live there. No, I don't. I give the address for the property from 67 Main Street South. Sir, any yes, communication, I, please I believe, talk to I, me. I believe their request was for his address where he resides. Oh, I misunderstood. Sorry. And and so it's the, uh, the perception here is that Mr. Capil lives at this address, no. and he does not. No, I don't. Uh, I, Mr. Capil, as, as please a, do not engage into the conversation. Right. When your time comes, you can clear any of your thoughts. And to be honest with you, we are looking uh, here, this application. We don't want to go into addresses or where someone lives. We have this application in front of us. This address has been provided. You can certainly ask any of the questions to the staff, maybe now or after. But uh, if the only question I will suggest is uh, should be asked here if they are relevant to the application directly or the nature or the variance they are seeking, if they are relevant to them. 
I think I think a, a few items, uh, just again perception-wise to the committee, is that as a neighbor, I did approach uh, the homeowner to introduce myself and also to uh, try to understand what the plans were for the property. Which homeowner? Sorry. The the existing the, the existing homeowner. Okay. I believe it's Mr. Capil's son, and that's and I think that's properly stated on the application. Mm -hmm. And uh, he seemed rather surprised that I got a notice and that this was proceeding. Um, the uh, I tried to understand, tried to get a better understanding of the plans of what was to happen, and um, he assured me that uh, they had no intentions of building a home on the back property at any time in the near future. They just wanted to sever the lot, and that they might sell the lot. So. Um, <clears throat> The idea that this might be a retirement home for somebody uh, related to him was was not presented at the time, and um, I, I, uh, there was uh, sorry. There's one other point. Um, I left my contact information, mm -hmm. and he he suggested that the applicant, his father, knew much more about this, and that perhaps he should contact me. And I said that'd be a great idea, and I left my my name and phone numbers um, a week and a half ago, and I haven't been contacted. So, mm -hmm. so I appreciate the I, sorry. I appreciate the offer that I, I do believe the neighbors should be consulted, and that there should be a, a neighborly dialogue <coughs> about the about the plans and what what the intentions are. Mm -hmm. But uh, our efforts to to date haven't um, yielded that. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you for bringing uh, another point. Uh, the reality is, uh, once if the lot is severed, as it been asked uh, previously, it, they are entitled to sell. They are entitled to build according to the city bylaws. Uh, anything else, sir? Just, hi. New information, right? Yes, and it okay. pertains your name, to your the name deferral. and address again. It pertains to the deferral, and it could go to city staff as well. If it's deferred and there's Sorry, another... Sorry, your name, uh, name please. Uh, my name is Ado Van Belkin, 77 Elizabeth yeah. Street South. If it's deferred and uh, if there's going to be another meeting such as this, I ask that a sign for the Committee of Adjustment be placed also on Elizabeth Street, the entrance, not only on Main Street, because I, I'm sure that one on Main Street was there for weeks and I never knew it was there until I got the uh, Notice. letter in the mail because... Nobody who's affected, besides the direct neighbors, would have seen that sign. But everyone who's affected would see the sign placed on Elizabeth Street. So if two signs could be placed, I'd appreciate that very much. I can clarify that uh, with uh, Ms. Myers. Ms. Myers, is there something can be done? The signs? Uh, through the chair, yes. I can take that under consideration and post uh, issue two signs, one for either frontage. The Planning Act requires that the sign be posted on the street frontage that's subject to the application, which is why the applicant did correctly post it on Elizabeth Street. Mm -hmm. But recognizing the concerns of the neighbor, we can certainly issue two signs for the future hearing date. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Ma'am, your name and Mr. address Chair, for the... Sure. Yeah. Uh, independently from Mr. Van Belkom and Mrs. Van Belkom. <laughs> that's good to see independence here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last name is two words, V-A-N space B-E-L-K-O-M. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is if this is discussed at any level at which citizens are allowed to attend, um, in particular if motions and votes are being taken place, uh, if the, we could also be notified, especially by individuals that submitted their concerns by a written uh, format. So if the committee is choosing a future date mm -hmm. and whenever uh, the applicant comes back with uh, the requirements, uh, everyone will be notified as previously in a certain radius and especially all this, uh, the people who have submitted their letters are all, all the concerned neighbors are being present here because uh, Sec Secretary Treasurer is making sure that she's noting down. That's why we're asking correct names and addresses. So Mr. Chair, just for clarification, if things are discussed at the Heritage Board level, uh, where, most, where things will be reviewed and discussed, uh, if at that particular, if those particular meetings, if the residents that are concerned also be informed of the dates and times that those issues will be reviewed at the committee level, not this committee level, but yeah, at the, the committee board, levels, you 
Yes, please. Uh, staff, uh, maybe can answer. I, I never got the opportunity to serve on Heritage Board, but I'm sure uh, their uh, method should be the same uh, for the letters. Like if, uh, I guess, staff uh, must have uh, present on those meetings as well, and maybe uh, you can answer how the system works there, and is the neighbors, concerned neighbors, can participate in those meetings as well? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, the application, if they build, the, uh, I don't believe the application for the consent to create the lot needs to go to the Heritage Board for a heritage. Essentially, you need, anything that needs a heritage permit needs to go to the Heritage Board and then to Council for approval. I believe a new house, when that is proposed, if, if the severance is approved, a new house is to be constructed, that would require a heritage permit and require going to the Heritage Board. Um, I don't believe there is a public notification for that, but if the, uh, the resident or any resident contacts heritage staff and I can provide the name for heritage staff or the clerk's office, they'd be able to be notified of one that does in fact go to the Heritage Board. But uh, to your point, uh, it will go to the Heritage Board only once the severance is done. Am I correct? Yes, I believe the, what would be going to the Heritage Board is, would be the permit for the new house. And the new house can only, can only be done if the severance is approved. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome. So, uh, again, uh, this is the first business. It took a bit longer than the usual practice, but uh, we are not here to make the decision on the application, but the first business is we are going to make uh, the decision whether we are going to deal this application today or in a future date. So committee members, I guess we have enough discussion how we'd like to move. Uh, I'm in, as I mentioned, I'm in support of uh, uh, the death will not to exceed prior to one year as staff indicated. I would like to go with the staff recommendations. Uh, you're more than welcome. The floor is open for any suggestion or, or, or the motion. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, motion to defer <coughs> the application. Um, with a request that uh, Heritage Impact Assessment and a tree preservation report be provided um, in less than one year's time. Okay. So, a motion uh, supported by uh, Ms. Doffler, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? So, this application uh, has been deferred as we just uh, discussed. So all concerned neighbors will be uh, notified for the future whenever the application comes back to uh, come back to the committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, committee. Anybody else here uh, wishes to ask for any deferral or? Any deferral or uh, withdrawal request? Through the chair, we do have uh, some two? written requests. Yeah, two more. Uh, the one address is 11570 McQueen Drive. Yes. Kendall Con Limited. Good morning. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Eric Marisu. I am here. I'm the agent here on behalf of the owner at 11570 uh, McQueen Drive, and um, we have uh, had discussions with staff in terms of um, proceeding with this application before, and uh, we have submitted new drawings and, and new, uh, I guess, a new application to Ms. Jeannie Myers. Unfortunately, we didn't meet the deadline this time, so we'd like to request a deferral for the next available meeting, and I believe uh, staff have requested the 20th. August? Yeah, we'll uh, ask staff. So at this point out of the application, the, the deferral uh, uh, you're requesting is for B19003, A19034, and addition, you would like to withdraw the application A19035? That's correct. Okay, so uh, we don't need a motion to withdraw, so we're just... Uh, uh, it's just to acknowledge that the application has been withdrawn. So the appli uh, just for the public knowledge, the applicant is withdrawing application A19035. So the rest of the two application, uh, committee members, any question or concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone here from the audience uh, wishes to speak on these applications? 
we are dealing with just to clear everyone uh, 11570 McQueen Drive ward number 10 staff could you please weigh in your comments staff are in support of the deferral uh, for applications B19003 A19-034 and A19035 at this point uh, withdrawal may be um, um, preemptive as uh, th there we we're not sure if it, it may be required and there's no harm in, in deferring that one as well uh, we are requesting that they be deferred to August 20th um, as that provides us with a little bit of additional time in terms of coming up with uh, uh, reviewing the application and potential con uh, conditions um, it's noted uh, that uh, if uh, if we were to try to reach the July 30th, that the application and the, would have to be circulated by a July 12th, which doesn't really allow us that much time. Hence the request for the deferral to the August 20th date. Okay. I noted it has been deferred a few times in the past. Yeah. Right? And I'm not in favor of keep deferring things. No, I understand. Right? To be very honest with you. Uh, I'm only willing to consider this at my personal level if we are having obviously the new information and through the chair to, uh, uh, we have received new information uh, the consent application has changed substantially uh, from when it was originally proposed that's why at this point uh, staff are recommending deferral the past two recommendations actually were for refusal yeah. and due to the change we're now recommending a deferral at this point yeah. fair enough Any members, any question, concern at this point? I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah. Uh, as staff suggested, August 20th. That is uh, do correct. you understand and accept? I do, yes. Yeah. Okay. So if no further discussion, any members would like to move uh, a motion? Through the chair, before we proceed with the motion, I just need clarification on um, staff has recommended support for deferral of three applications, although the agent yeah. has requested that one be withdrawn. So I need to know where we go from here. Sure. Uh, I guess I already announced that uh, the agent is withdrawing A19035. So I'd like to ask staff if they are willing to amend their recommendation. Staff are willing uh, to withdraw that application and to um, uh, recommend withdrawal of that application. However, as mentioned before, uh, we see that there may be the potential that the minor variance may need to be uh, kept. Mm -hmm. So we were doing that preemptively in, in order to, uh, so that the applicant wouldn't have to reapply potentially. But if the applicant is requesting a withdrawal of that application, we'd be okay with that. Sure. <coughs> to the applicant, uh, instead of withdrawing now, I guess maybe you can ask the same withdrawal on August 20th. That's okay, actually. That's we're okay with that. So uh, all three uh, applications are back in agenda. I uh, I don't think so. I need a motion back. We're just uh, uh, we will be dealing according to this recommendation. All three applications on August uh, 20th, 2019. So committee members. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Excuse me. Through you, Mr. Chair, I recommend that we defer this application, or these three applications, to August the 20th. Okay. A motion to defer by Ms. Marcus, seconded by Mr. Powder. All in favor? Okay, so this is deferred to August 20th. Thank you. The next written uh, I have is um, 750 Intermodal Drive, application A19103. Okay, yep. Okay. So I'm also the uh, agent on this application as well. Um, we submitted an application for a variance to permit a uh, fence in the front yard. Um, ahead of, I guess, a site plan application. So we've since spoken with staff who want us to advance a little further with the actual site plan application itself before we proceed with the variance. And um, we understand that and we are in acceptance of that. Okay. Any question, concern committee members? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? 
Property address is 750 Intermodal Drive, Ward number 8. Application uh, file number A19-103. Seeing none, uh, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? I can see the applicant is requesting indefinite deferral, uh, and uh, the recommendation is not uh, no later than the last committee meeting of 2019. Yeah, that's to the chair. That's correct. So staff is recommending that um, this be deferred to the end of the year. That should be giving sufficient time to deal with the, the site plan application. Plus, also ensure that the application moves forward and doesn't stall out. Okay. You understand and accept uh, yes. the staff's recommendation? Yeah, we are in acceptance. Okay. So, committee members? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Do we have a date that we can uh, put forward? I guess uh, it's the same way if uh, uh, by this recommendation is uh, to defer to no later than the last committee meeting of 2019. So that means if uh, the applicant uh, is ready in, for, uh, for example, next three to four months, they can come uh, to us. Uh, that's why there's no specific date, but just limiting not to pass 2019. That's what my understanding is. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so looking for uh, uh, some support, uh, how would we like to move ahead uh, to defer uh, this application? Or are you Motion to defer as staff recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Duffer. All in favor? Thank you. Anybody else here present one final call? If anyone is willing to request a withdrawal or deferral, if not, then we'll just move on to the... For those unfamiliar with the Committee of Adjustment Procedure and Process, I would like to give a brief explanation and scope. Following some procedural matter that we have already undergone, the Secretary Treasurer will call the applications by announcing the application number, the name of the applicant, and address of the subject property to the application. The applicant or authorized agent representing the application will then come to the podium, state their name and address for the record, and then present uh, the application. I request that you reserve any question or comment pertaining to the staff report until after the until after planning staff has had an opportunity to present. If there is anyone in the attendance who wishes to speak to a particular application, you will be given the opportunity to do so when the application is presented. Any decision made here today may be appealed to the local planning appeal tribunal, previously through the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, appeal received in the city clerk's office associated with minor variance and consent applications will be processed and forwarded to LPAT. This process may be commenced with Secretary Treasurer by filing a completed appeal form and filing fee within the prescribed 20-day appeal period. Information pertaining to the appeal process may be obtained by contacting uh, the Secretary Treasurer within the city clerk's office. Now we move on to the new consent applications. Calling application B19016, Eshawar Gangaram. The property is located at 10501 Goreway Drive. Hello again, it's my last one. Um, so I'm here on behalf of the owner at 10501 Goreway Drive. Um, I guess the purpose of our application is to request a um, an easement, a sanitary easement, uh, which will be in favor of the owner at 27 Morris Court. Okay, any question, concern, committee members? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The staff is of the view that the application B19-016 is supported. Thank you. Okay, so no conditions. That's more important. Staff, uh, sorry, uh, committee members, how would you like to deal? Okay, uh, motion to support by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The secretary treasurer that are standard to these types yes, of applications. My bad. <laughs> there are conditions actually, <laughs> and I cannot overlook Ms. Myers. 
uh, to the applicant. There are some, uh, uh, Secretary Treasurer is suggesting some conditions. Are you in agreement? Yes, I've received the new reason. We're okay with that. Okay. So back to Ms. Marcus. Okay. With so conditions? I move to approve this, uh, this item in our agenda today with the two conditions, that being number one and two as proposed by the Secretary. Okay, uh, motion put forward uh, to support with conditions by Ms. Marcus, seconded by Ms. Duffer. All in favor? Thank you. So approved. Calling application A-19-036, Thanaswar Sabedi and Sushant Sabedi. The property is located at 8 Marsden Crescent. Hi, my name is Thanaswar Sabedi and address 8 Marsden Crescent. File number A-19-036. Sure. Would you like to add anything? We have your information here already. Okay. Okay. Committee members, any question, concern at this point? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please win your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair. The subject application has gone through the four tests of the minor variants. It is staff's recommendation that application A19036 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. First, that a building permit shall be obtained for each of the accessory structures as required by the Ontario Building Code within 60 days of the committee's final decision. Second, that the accessory structures are not to be used for habitable purposes that drainage from the proposed accessory structures, garage, and the two existing accessory structures, sheds, be contained solely on the subject property, and that drainage on adjacent properties shall not be adversely affected by providing a drainage plan for the site. <coughs> that the extent of the variance be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice, and finally, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Sir, you understand and accept these conditions? Yeah, the two conditions for the, um, to obtain one of the, the building permits. Yeah, all, there's a total five conditions. Yes. I'm sure you must have got the... Yes, I do. You understand and yeah. accept? Yeah. I have one question. Uh, during my site visit, I, you were there in your yeah. backyard, yeah. and uh, you were in that uh, uh, accessory structure. Yeah. Uh, that's some sort of shed to me, uh, that was more like a room. Uh, it's quite the, big, yeah, it was already built on a board. Right? Yeah. yeah, but, uh, uh, and I could see nicely finished, which is a good thing, but I just, uh, I, want, I need some clarity for the recommendation number two, habitable purpose, if, uh, Ms. Corazola. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, it, an area doesn't become habitable, generally speaking, until we involve the, um, the presence of plumbing. So that has always been the determining factor. If you do not have water service in your accessory structure, then it is not, in fact, habitable. Accessory structures can obviously be used for a number of purposes, including workshops or you know, little bonus rooms, if you will. Some people use them for crafts. Um, but as long as they're not provided with any kind of plumbing service, heating and lighting is not an issue. It's the plumbing that determines whether it's habitable. I believe you have the plumbing there, right? No plumbing. No? Yeah. OK, that's fine. You might have to carry the jug full of water to your backyard <laughs> from your home. Okay, so if no further discussion, uh, looking for the motion. Motion to stop with staff's recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? It's approved. Thank you. All right, thank you. Application A19108, Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. Property is located at 9030 McLean Drive. 
Anyone from TRCA? Normally, we always wait for the comments from TRCA until the TRCA's <laughs> representatives are not here. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, put this application to the end of the agenda if uh, maybe they show up at that time. So the next application, please. Calling application A19109, Villa Chaudhry and Gujam Villa. The property is located at 26 Rose Garden Drive. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. I'm Pamir Afik, 33 Heaven Crescent, Milton, and that's my partner, Nick Nozat. Are you the owner of the property or not I'm, the agent, right? I'm the agent. And same as that gentleman? Same, yes. Okay, so I guess your information is already we have in the file, so please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Nasser Mahmoud for being in support of the application. Uh, as long as we follow the conditions, we're okay with all the conditions. And uh, I have a Do you mind if I remove this for a second and, and put my... Sure. Okay. That's just, that's a 3D rendering of the proposal. And uh, we, we are asking for three Variances. Mm -hmm. Number one is for building height, number two is garage door height, and three is uh, fence height. For, and, uh, should, I, should I go through them? Or? It's all your call. Uh, okay. uh, we have already in the application, okay. and that was displayed uh, before you put on this beautiful picture. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I guess uh, it, it's entirely your call. Anything else? We have this information. Anything else you wishes to add beside you put in your application? I just add that this uh, variance we're asking is very similar to other neighbors in the neighborhood. We're yep. all, you know, we are not asking for anything. Sure, you'll know that. No problem. We Thank see you, these applications from the neighborhood uh, time to time, so the committee is fully aware about uh, not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any question, concern, comment, committee members? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Sir, please come forward. If you may, uh, please sure. step aside. A little bit more, sir. Please okay. step aside. Yeah. Your name and address for the record? Good morning, Chairman, Committee, members and staff. My name is Peter Brzezikas of Empire Design Company, here to represent uh, the owner of number six, Cheval Court, which is the adjacent neighbor to this property mm -hmm. uh, in this application. Uh, I have sent in a uh, opposition letter signed yep. by Mr. Tambor. I was going to include that for the record. Uh, we have it. In regards to these variances, there still seems to be some unanswered questions, although I've not had the opportunity to review any building plans at all, other than the photo just presented. Um, questions raising, which some of them have been answered, is there an elevator access in the roof space? Is there an abundance of dormers within the roof space? Is there a staircase accessing the roof space? How are the roof trusses able to span greater than 40 feet? Is there a large cavity in the attic space, adequate headroom? having greater than seven foot 10 in ceiling height? Is there a second kitchen? Is the roof space provided with electrical and drywall? All these questions raised can easily be assumed that there'll be a future third floor living space within the roof. And the assumption leads one to the next having uh, a second or third family living in this property. Notwithstanding that the current zoning bylaw for height restrictions right now is very, very generous at 10.6 meters. We don't see any possible reason to build higher than what is allowed. The proposal, if granted, will only open the door for many other properties to do the same, not just in this neighborhood, throughout the city. It will basically set the precedence for all future properties. And 10.6 meters is extremely generous considering the fact that we compare Oakville and Mississauga at nine meters. With respect to my client and most likely the majority of all homeowners within this grand neighborhood of Castlemore Estates, we oppose and disagree to this proposal and request the committee members to refuse this application. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you. Uh, some of your questions, I'm not sure if staff can answer in regards to uh, are we at that stage or they can still change, like whether the kitchen or the elevator or something if you wish to answer. 
just for the information purpose, uh, you're more than welcome. Otherwise, we'll just, uh, I have included the letter for the record. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't think I have the answers to these questions, but we have looked at the, uh, the size of the lot and size of the <coughs> size of the houses in the, in the area and the general character of the, the neighborhood and uh, we are of the view that uh, it, it meets the general character of the, uh, the area and the large size of the height in the area. Thank you. Okay, sure. For the record, I have one another uh, a letter in opposition from residents from 24 Rose Garden Drive. Uh, they also sent their letter uh, in opposition to this uh, variance. <laughs> Anyone else in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Uh, staff, could you please bring your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the staff is of the view that the application A19-109 is uh, supportable, subject to six conditions. Condition number one, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Number two, that the proposed decorative metal fence shall be of open construction. Condition number three, that a fencing design and detail be approved as part of the site plan application SP19-013.000. Condition number four, that the fence post height shall not exceed 1.83 meters and the fence pickets shall not exceed 1.52 meter in height. Condition number five, that the owner finalize site plan approval under site plan under city file SP19-013.000, execute a site plan agreement if required, and post any required financial securities and insurance if required to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services. And last, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Sir, do you understand and accept these conditions? Yeah, we accept the conditions and just for the record, all the neighbor has the same <coughs> privileges and the same thing, and so we're not asking for anything. <coughs> yeah, no, uh, I, as for my concern, I know the neighborhood uh, a bit. Yeah, I it's a state lot, it's not a I understand no problem, like but uh, thank you for displaying no problem. Thank you. Any members, any question, concern, comment? If not, then seeking a motion to proceed. With staff's recommendation. recommendation. Motion to approve with staff recommendation by uh, by uh, Ms. Uh, Duffler. We have seconder. Seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? This is thank, you, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Planner. Calling application A19110, Jose Fritas and Donna Pinheiro. The property is located at number six, Driscoll Drive. Good morning. Good morning. So I am here to, um, to apply for the variance on the driveway. Um, I did get the response back and it looks like um, Mr. Muhammad believes that's for an additional parking. It's actually not. We do have three cars, and I do park my car in the garage. I have a two-car garage, so we actually do have four parkings. However, uh, I have a disabled mom that lives with me, and she's had numerous strokes, and um, it's difficult sometimes. So if you see the pictures before, in going... Up. It was very narrow and steep, and she had fallen. What actually pushed me to do the driveway was my dad coming, uh, actually fl slipped over, coming the little edge in the winter time, broke three ribs, and was in hospital for three to four, uh, four to five days. At that point, see like this section here, it was very, very narrow. And even with the two cars parked there, in order to open, especially in the winter time with the mountains of snow, the car would hit. So it was very tight. Now with my mom, we, we do have assistance from Wheel Trans to come. 
and it was difficult. So we did open this section here. And if you look in with comparison to the cards, even when you open, we needed that extra space just to make it more helpful for her to come in and out with the walker, even our stairs are, are larger. We do not park cars there. On occasion, have I shifted the car over probably another half car space? Yes, I'll back in so that it's easier for me to, you know, as sister into that into the house. Um, but it, it wasn't done, honestly, for an additional parking space. And me being a homeowner, the reason we did it is because I plan to stay there until I downsize and you know my kids are gone. I take great pride in my home, um, and I'm hoping that the committee understands that it really is for the safety of my parents who live with me. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll make some comment after, but if anyone has any question or concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff is of the view that the application A19-110 is supportable in part, subject to three conditions. Condition number one, that various number one be refused, which is for the widening of the driveway. And condition number two, that drainage from the shed's roof shall flow on the applicant's property, and that uh, drainage on the adjacent properties not be adversely affected. Condition number three, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. And you understand and accept these I conditions? I didn't hear the first one. So the first one is to refuse the variance number one. So that means I believe it's for the driveway yeah. widening. You understand and accept? I'm not understanding. So he's not. So what staff is basically suggesting, uh, uh, maybe staff can explain again, uh, Mr. Mahmoud. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you please make sure your microphone is on? Uh, yeah, it when is on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what staff is, uh, the, the applicant has uh, proposed two variances. One variance is to, variance number one is to permit a maximum driveway width of 8.78 meters whereas the bylaw permits a maximum driver width of 6.71 meters. And the second variance is, because there's a shed located in the rear yard as well, so the second variance is to permit an existing accessory structure or shed having a side yard setback of 0 0.21 meters, whereas the bylaw requires a minimum setback of 0 0.6 meters from an accessory structure to all property line. So what staff has recommended that the Variance number one, which relates to the widening of the driveway, should be refused, and only the variance relating to the existing shed close to the rear and side lot, lot line be approved only. And what does that mean to me? That means to you is uh, out of two of your variance, your driveway right now, the width is 28.81 feet, whereas the bylaw uh, according to the bylaw, you can go to maximum 22 feet. So your driveway is uh, 6.81 feet more wider than the according to the city bylaws. Mm -hmm. So that's what staff is refusing at this point. This is what they are uh, recommending. Uh, and uh, the second variance uh, they are fine with. Uh, so uh, the com my comment on this one is uh, it's a bit over uh, as uh, the allowable is 22. This is 28.81. And But as you mentioned and we have seen um, at, at least in these pictures or during my site visit, uh, there's no car parked, but uh, it can park over there if anyone, yes. well, the space is right there. Uh, if uh, and Ms. Corzola, uh, right, uh, left to you, uh, she will, I guess, uh, give us more information on this or if you have any question. If the committee is going with staff recommendation, that doesn't mean, uh, and please correct me if uh, I'm wrong, Ms. Corzola, that doesn't mean that you need to demolish your driveway. 
but you need to put some permanent barriers, for example, maybe a permanent bench, which is uh, permanently attached to the, to the driveway, or some flower, flower uh, some landscaping, some permanent heavy stone. Sometimes we have seen- So like on top? Mm. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, that, I, I can do that. Right, so, uh, but uh, Ms. Corzola, if you can please explain uh, in the event if the committee is going with the uh, committee is going with staff recommendation, what are their options? Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. There are some options obviously available for residents to reduce um, the parkable surface, which is really what a driveway is defined as being any hard and level surface that's capable of being parked upon. Um, so I'm not certain what kind of discussions the resident may have had with the bylaw enforcement officer who's been dealing with this, but typically they will offer options such as placing, you know, permanently affixed to the ground landscaped features, as you mentioned, to perhaps a, a bench, light posts have been used, um, heavy substantial flower pots, something that would really prohibit a vehicle from being able or capable of parking on that excess width. Um, given that this is six feet wide and it's been widened to the sidewalk. I don't know whether the enforcement officer has been asking for some of that paved surface to be removed, um, but certainly in my opinion, it, it could be resolved with the placement of some permanent physical barriers without having to remove any of the paved surface. I haven't uh, spoke to an enforcing officer, mm -hmm. uh, so um, I'm assuming that I would get something back with details of how much needs to be and uh, uh, there are some other, uh, like within this, if something permanent going to be uh, placed there, as uh, I suggested and uh, Ms. Corazola just uh, said, uh, that's not going to be right in front of your stairs. Uh, it's, I think, six feet or so, um, some space. Uh, so it's not that anyone who's walking down from those stairs and you're going to hitch yourself to the bench or the lamppost, uh, that's not the way it works, so I'm sure there is some space. Uh, Ms. Corzola, am I correct? That's correct, you, Mr. Chair. Um, we do allow a six, six foot deep path that leads to the stairs. Obviously, it's, it's a beautifully landscaped front yard, so there'll be some space to be left in front of the stairs to allow access to that stairway. I would also caution that any permanent barriers cannot extend onto the city property, which <coughs> is generally in line with the water shutoff valve, somewhere probably in the middle of that driveway. Um, so obviously working with the bylaw enforcement officer um, would be key to determine where and what would be the appropriate um, physical barrier. And again, it has to be permanently affixed to the ground so that it cannot be removed except with the use of tools. So a lot of people do bolt things down into the concrete. Um, I would also um, suggest that or for the committee's information, there has been no removal of the required permeable landscaping on the other side of the property, and that the maximum allowable width would be 22 feet, which is what was identified in the notice that was issued from the bylaw enforcement officer. So as long as that barrier is placed so that no more than 22 feet of that driveway can be parked upon, that would be in compliance with the zoning bylaw. So basically, uh, uh, is the bench has to be six feet something because they are it has to be sufficient in size to prohibit a vehicle from parking on that side so i mean we like to provide owners with flexibility in determining the kind of landscaping that they feel is is desirable for their own property um, so we don't dictate the size it has to be something that's at least two feet high uh -huh. otherwise vehicles tend to you know if it was a curb or something of that nature people just straddle it so it does have to be a physical barrier that's capable of preventing a car from getting over there. I'm sure uh, this discussion might have helped you uh, in understanding. So uh, moving forward, are you okay with the, uh, what uh, you understand the procedure? Yes. Do the, the, who should I contact with before I do anything? So is, um, is it would be Mr. Mohammed, the development planner, or? through you, Mr. Chair, it would be the bylaw enforcement officer who issued the violation notice with respect to this driveway. Okay. If no further discussion, looking for the motion to proceed. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that we approve this uh, application as it is before us with the, at the with the three uh, with the two uh, variances approved and uh, adding instead of the variation being refused on item number one that it be accommodated with uh, some type of uh, Landscape. landscaping or uh, some permanent something that you can still have access for your mom but that you cannot park a car there. Mm. So if I put like the armored stones across the bottom a little bit up across the top so a car can't get in this way and still leave that space for her to come around this way, that would be suffice? Uh, I guess uh, we are not in position to uh, explain or comment on that one at this point. The best thing is to work with staff. Uh, after uh, today, I guess uh, we have to wait 20 days uh, because anyone can appeal the decision or if you are not happy, you have the right to appeal as well. Uh, but after that, uh, that is between, uh, well, the staff will be between you and the staff. Uh. Uh, there's a comment from three, Mr. Chair, if, if I may help sure, sure. you explain. What is being proposed in this motion is actually exactly what's being re re recommended to staff, which is that variance one be refused. Variance one would be to permit the increased driveway width. So to permit the increased driveway width, but then require that it comply with the zoning bylaw means that the variance is being refused. So planning staff has recommended variance one be refused. There are alternatives to bring the property into compliance with the zoning bylaw, including the placement of those barriers. If you would like to consider approving a width that's greater than 22 feet, then I would leave that open to your discretion, obviously, and that would be an approval of the increased width. But the way that I understood the motion to be worded is that the variance was being approved, but then must also comply with the zoning bylaw. So I leave it in, in committee's hands whether in, there's a modest increase to allow more than 22 feet in width to mm -hmm. be permitted, and then the placement of some barriers. How would we, uh, in, through, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, how would we uh, word this so that uh, we are following your recommendation, but yet uh, accommodating what we had spoken of during the, during the hearing. The way that the conditions are referred to right now would be appropriate if you are only allowing the 22 feet of parkable surface. Anything else is something that the owner can negotiate with both bylaw enforcement and zoning staff mm -hmm. as far as where the barriers should be placed. If you want to <coughs> allow for more than 22 feet, up to 24 feet perhaps, then that's something the committee can, can consider, and then the barriers can be placed at the 24 foot mark. One question, uh, if uh, we have the exact, what's the frontage of the lot, if uh, we have? Um, the property is 12.35 meters, so I have to convert that. Uh, Into feet? I, I, I more follow feet, so if you can see. About Otherwise, I'll use my calculator. That's 40 feet in frontage. Okay. So, so the current driveway is about 70% of the lot width. So am I able to request the extra footage and not full so that it doesn't permit a vehicle to, because if it's back to the 22 feet, so when wheel trans comes down and she's in the wheelchair, I'm still not gonna have, like when they back up, still not gonna have that access to have her come straight into the home. Uh, sure, you are. Do, 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 do you know what I mean? Like, so the concern is being able to park another car. So if I take two feet off and remove like, two feet of the concrete off, that allows to give the space for her to go in, so that would take that much off. Because when wheel trans come in, they come in this way, and mm -hmm. then there's like a, it's like a, an, a, a, like an escalator that goes down flat, and then we push her out. So if I don't get that extra, I'm gonna be pushing her into, because the vehicle cannot go all the way back to the garage. Who, sorry, who lives in this house? Your mom, you said? My, yes, my mom. Is she lives by herself? No, that's my home. She lives with me. She okay. moved in with me. Um, she's very sick. She has osteoporosis, diabetes, and if you look, the ambulance is often comes to my house to pick her up because she goes into diabetic. It, it, it's, it's a difficult situation. So um, 
I, my, my, I really I really do need if if I don't get it we'll probably have to sell and move what my uh, thing is uh, what my comment on this one uh, given the fact the property has maintained well uh, like and I can see some beautifully landscaped on this one I do agree with staff this is their job to keep everything online in the line and they are doing great job in that and you know but at the same time, they do uh, accept uh, recommendations or suggestions from this committee and they try their best to work with uh, every residence. <laughs> their intention is not to give hard time to anyone, but we have some regulations and we are all bounded to follow them, whether it's mm -hmm. me or this committee. Uh, this road over here, uh, uh, it's not really side, or I know it's not really one of the heavy traffic one, but it's still, contains uh, some side roads and uh, so uh, uh, I am not, normally I'm not in support of approving something uh, where I, I could see the big uh, violations. Uh, in this case, there's no permeable landscape uh, feature has been added and if committee wishes to approve as is, I'm fine with it as well. Or uh, the second uh, options are uh, maybe uh, out of 22 we can add something 26 or 25 feet and then the rest uh, I don't think so you have to cut but to put something permanent barrier at the same time if in the case of ambulances coming uh, and uh, at the road there's already a bit of the traffic I don't want that either that uh, any disturbance or anything like I I'm fine with this beautifully landscaped uh, and uh, it looks beautiful to me. It's not uh, something which is bothering uh, when you drive or the neighborhood. And I don't see any opposition here from the neighbors either. So committee members, all your call, uh, Ms. Toffler. Uh, you can comment to Ms. Marcus or Mr. Power uh, is open or if staff is willing to give me some suggestions to this committee, I'm more than welcome to hear. So my, I'm okay with two things, whether we are going to 25 feet uh, from 22, or uh, I'm okay to prove uh, as is because I can see the intention is not bad uh, in this uh, in this case. Uh, so these are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I I like you uh, visited the property and uh, was not offended in the least by the way the property looks. I think that it's a beautiful property. Um, my concern is like. The, everybody else's, the community concerns that you eventually, uh, stuff happens, people change, circumstances change, and uh, in two or three years you'd be able to park a car there and you'd be perfectly legal if we went that route. So I'd like to see us be able to keep the structure as it is, and uh, but do something that interrupts it from eventually becoming a third parking space. And, um, and to me, it's removing two or three feet from this by placing uh, some type of uh, flower pots or something like that. So I'm okay with approving it with less two feet, for instance, or something like that. Okay, so, if, uh, so what you're suggesting, uh, instead of 22 feet, uh, the maximum width you're proposing, 26 feet uh, maximum uh, width? Uh, where the driveway right now currently having 28.81 feet. Is yeah. that sort of something you're yeah, okay? I think that I'm okay with that. Yes. How about the rest I'm of the committee? Of course, open yeah. to suggestions yes. from my colleagues. Yes. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I tend not to approve any driveway widths larger than what is allowed, but you have an exceptional case, and I understand that you have a need for it. So I don't know that we can make a decision to reduce it by a certain amount, whether that's actually going to make a difference or not. Um, my suggestion would be that <coughs> we keep it all in or bring it back to uh, meet the bylaw. I would say that um, I don't know if we can add this in and I don't know if it's enforceable, but um, in the event that the property is sold, that this reverts back so we don't have the uh, the authority to do that. So that's what we worry about is 
if in a few years' time you sell, then somebody else can use it as a third parking spot. At so. that point, can I do something to say or sign something that I will have that removed if we do think, and I mean, we have no intentions on selling. We really don't. Um, you know, we've even opened up the wide, like the areas in the house, the door frames to allow her proper accessibility. We made our living room her bedroom. Um, so, I mean, I'm not gonna say never, um, she is only 67 years old, so it's not, um, it's more her mobility that's, that is the issue as far as goes anything else. She doesn't have heart condition, she does have diabetes, so I don't see and myself and being not within anyways 15 to 20 years. I understand, uh, sorry. Sorry, Ms. Carzella, please Through go you, ahead. Mr. Chair, just a comment for the committee's consideration. So on the screen, the blue line running across the driveway is an illustration of what 28 feet would look like if you were looking to approve, um, sorry, 26 feet. If you were looking to approve a driveway width for 26 feet, then barriers would be placed roughly in this area here where that little green mm -hmm. dot is, is noted. Um, anything less than that um, obviously is for your consideration. I do note that if the committee is looking to make this a temporary variance, um, I agree that it, it's not appropriate to have it tied to the sale of the property, which staff have no involvement in whatsoever. But if you were looking to um, applying it for you know, 15 or 20 years of an approval, and then later, after 20 years from now, it, you know, conditions still warrant, it could come back to the committee to revisit that. Um, alternatively, it would simply expire if the conditions were no longer required, and then the existing driveway would be in non-compliance. Obviously, the owner would have to rectify it, should they still be the owner at that time, or any future owner would bear that burden, if that would be appropriate. I, uh, before uh, committee members uh, can give their suggestion, my comment, uh, my, my, my personal opinion is, I would not like to limit something with the time, especially when the council and the city is reviewing uh, the bylaws for the driveways and I believe they're coming back, the report is due in November. So uh, uh, back to Ms. Corozola, that green, uh, green dot you put forward, uh, is that 26 feet? Because that is bringing almost uh, half of the, coming to the half of the stairs, and uh, I guess which is okay, so that's easy for mm -hmm. anyone to get out of the vehicle. That's and correct. That's a 26 foot measurement right there, yeah. 7.9 meters. Yeah, so I am uh, okay with uh, 26 mm -hmm. feet, so that will, like, they are not, you're not getting fully as is, but you can place some of, uh, you can add some more beauty as your house is, looks good. From outside, the landscaping is good. You can add a few more features and you'll be fine. And your mom, I hope she'll be fine by wheelchair going to the home mm -hmm. uh, after uh, coming in a vehicle. So committee members, uh, I, uh, my personal suggestion is uh, instead of uh, 22 feet, uh, we can approve up to 26 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, if any suggestions or anything, you're more than welcome to add. Otherwise, um, I may. Okay. Staff, could you please help us out, uh, Ms. Corozola? Especially you, I always look at. Certainly. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, for your consideration, uh, members of the committee. Based on the discussion you're having right now, the proposed condition or, or um, change to condition one in the staff report, would that variance one be approved in part? And that the driveway shall have a maximum width of 7.9 meters? 26 feet and that permanent physical landscaped barriers shall be added and affixed to the pavement to prohibit the parking of a vehicle in the excess width beyond the 22, 26, 26 feet permitted. Are you okay and you understand? I, I, I am okay. So so with the, with the front, so if I put the landscaping across here up to the 26, I still have about six feet so that she would still be able to come yep. around this way and get in. 
Okay, yeah. that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. We are here to help yeah. everyone, and at the same time, we're working with the staff. Exactly. So uh, I amend my motion, and that would be to approve with the staff all the variances with the staff suggestions that uh, number one, variance number one, not be refused, but be in fact uh, approved to have a driveway with a maximum of 26 feet, and that the other two feet you put some kind of permanent. 2.8. Uh, 2.8. 2 and rest of the conditions are the same? Yes, it's the same. Yeah. Do we have seconder for this motion? Mm -hmm. Seconded by our, our motion, motion mm -hmm. amended mo motion put forward by Ms. Marcus, seconded by Ms. Toffler. All in mm -hmm. favor? Are you dissenting? Yes. Okay. So this is approved, three to one. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Calling application A19113, 237 Advance Inc., and the property is located at 237 Advance Boulevard. Uh, good morning, Chair and uh, staff members and city staff. My name is Harpreet Bonds, and I'm an architect and an agent from owner's side. My office address is 2250 Bowway Drive Beach, Unit 612 Brampton and we are asking to permit a fence in the front of the property 2.5 meter high. And just to give you a little bit history on the project, there are two buildings on the property 237B and 237A. The front fence for 237B was approved by a committee in year 2014. And the reason is that my client who is sitting here uh, they basically do medical marijuana and distribution of the same as per Health Canada regulations. And there are very strict rules for that because of safety and security. So that's why we are looking for fence in the front. And in the back already we do have a fence existing. So that's the reason. It's a very safe place. We don't want anybody to enter into property and uh, already it was approved in 2014 for the other half. And <laughs> since my owner bought the next building, so we wanted to secure the whole site. That's the logic. And if you want, we can show you the photos of the existing fence. This is how it will look like. So we will exactly follow the same design, same height, everything same. Okay. Anything else you wish us to add? No. That's my members, any question, comment, concern? No. None at this point. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff is of the view that the application, <coughs> sorry, A19 113 is supportable, subject to four um, conditions. Condition number one that the Front yard fence be allowed only in conjunction, conjunction with the proposed controlled substance manufacturing facility. <coughs> Sorry. Well, condition number two, that the owner finalize an informal site plan approval with the city to the satisfaction of the director of development services. The approved site plan is to include a fencing plan and detail generally consistent with the design as shown on the attached drawings and sample photo. And, and ensure clear access to properties 277B, 237B, 237, and 239 Advanced Boulevard. The plan is also to show existing trees, any trees that may be removed, and the replacement trees. In case the removal of a privately owned tree is required, a compensation tree, minimum of 30, 30, uh, 70 mm caliper, shall be provided by the owner. Condition number three, that the front yard fence shall not be installed uh, until such time as the owner's fencing plan and detail have been approved as part of the site plan approval process to the satisfaction of the 
Director of Development Services. And lastly, that uh, failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee <coughs> will render the variance null and void. Thank you. I, I do understand that. Accept and the conditions? Yeah. And then being an architect, we will go for site plan application. We will go for building permit. And just for your knowledge that this building, I already got building permit approval for 237A, 237B. We already have approvals from the city. And there are some more things coming on the property, so I will go for site plan application. For building permit, there is no issue in that. Okay. If no further uh, comments, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve uh, by Ms. Stockler with uh, conditions uh, and seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? It's approved. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Calling application A19114, Paul Audeshaw. Property is located at number 22, Palm Valley Drive. Fatullah Amiri, I'm the authorized agent for this application. And, um, Could you please uh, speak a bit loud if you don't mind, sir? Okay. Uh, we, we requested for three variances in this property. Uh, the first one is regarding the uh, driveway width. The first um, one is regarding the accessory structure. Yes. So the number Number one and two is for Sorry, accessory yeah, structures. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Okay. And number three and uh, number four is regarding the driveway. So right now we have uh, zero meters of permeable landscaping adjacent to the site uh, lot uh, line, which is refused. And uh, we want to we want to uh, go with the staff's uh, recommendation and we want to remove this two feet of uh, uh, driveway. Mm -hmm. But for, the, for number three, which says uh, to permit a drive, uh, driveway of width 8.27 meters or 27.13 feet, so if we remove the two feet from... Permeable, and then you will come into the... 25 feet, yeah. which is with the... By law, we, we are good till 26, 20, 25 feet. It says 24, 24 but I 24. guess there. Yeah, and we are one feet more. And we want, we request uh, if this, uh, the mm, variance number four is approved. Number three. Number three, number three, yes. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. So. You're willing to reinstate the permeable uh, landscaping, which is rough, roughly around two feet, 1.97, uh, which will be short by, uh, I would say, one uh, by one 1.13 feet. Uh, so, so that's what you're suggesting that instead of 24, if uh, the committee approves 25 feet, and you are willing to remove the permeable portion yes so then it will come to uh, come under the violin no, that's a fair uh, uh, fair uh, to me but uh, committee members any question concern at this point seeing none anyone in the audience wishes to speak for this application seeing none staff could you please weigh in your comments through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application against the four tests of a minor variance and have found that the application is supportable in part subject to the following refusals and conditions. Uh, number one, that the variance three to permit a driveway width of 8.27 meters be refused. Number two, that variance four to permit 0.0, .0 meters of permeable landscaping adjacent to a side lot line be refused. Number three, that variances one and two only be approved 
only to the extent in the general location indicated in the sketch attached to the public notice. Number four, that a building permit be obtained for the two accessory structures within 60 days of the final date of the decision of the committee. Number five, that the proposed accessory structure pergola remain of an open style construction and not be enclosed. Six, that the proposed accessory structure, uh, which is the proposed washroom, be limited to an area of 4.92 meters squared. Seven, that the accessory building shall not be used as a separate dwelling unit and that the permission for habitable space in the accessory building shall be limited to the provision of, the, of a washroom. Number eight, that the owner shall ensure that drainage from the proposed accessory structures, pergola and washroom shall be directed onto the subject property and that drainage on adjacent land shall not be adversely impacted. Number nine, that the existing privacy fence be maintained and number 10, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. And just to clarify, uh, staff is of the opinion to refuse variances three and four as the driveway design for this property, which has been extended in a manner that has resulted in the removal of the required permeable landscaping adjacent, adjacent to the side lot line is capable of allowing excessive parking in the front yard on the driveway and is not considered to be an appropriate design relative to the house and lot size. In addition, this extension obstructs walkway access to the front door and hinders an aesthetically pleasing landscape. Thank you. You understand the conditions? Yes. So uh, we have some pictures where your vehicle, or not your vehicle, your property owner's vehicle is uh, parked uh, right in front of uh, the entrance. I'm not sure if you can see from here, but uh, you can see the way it parked. Yes. Uh, it's a corner property and when uh, it's going to the side of the house, uh, the pictures are there. That is something okay. we cannot accept here. I'm sorry. Okay. Right? So just before you, we had application with genuine reason. Uh, we compromised the situation. I was fine with one feet uh, extra to you, uh, but given the fact, uh, based on my uh, committee members can uh, express their opinions, uh, how they like to deal with. Uh, any co comment, question, concern by committee members? Please go. Mr. Chair, just, um, I did observe that there was a car parked where we don't want cars parked, creating a Streetscape issue. Everything is done very nicely, but it just doesn't meet the bylaws, and is in, it is in fact encouraging the parking of an extra vehicle. So, I personally cannot uh, approve the expanded width. Um, the yellow car looks okay. beautiful. I can see, and <laughs> I, I could be okay if just that car parked, but you parked another um, one, or your owner at the back. So I, I too agree with uh, my colleague. Yeah, if, uh, if we do, sorry, if we like uh, remove this, the sidewalk in front of the stairs a little bit and get it the one feet uh, extension, approval for one feet extension at the side of the driveway so that uh, we, there would be no potential or a car parking in front of the stair. I stairs. guess, I guess, uh, Ms. Corzola can uh, correct, uh, but uh, the two feet permeable is uh, from uh, not here, I guess to the other side of the driveway, and then you can readjust wherever the one feet uh, extra you can find. Yeah, one feet to the left side, if we, if we, we request, of course, two feet at the neighbor's side, we will, we will remove that. Uh, driveway mm -hmm. but we want one feet at the left side so we are allowed 24 24 feet but we want uh, 25 feet yeah so two feet from here i understand uh what you're saying like two feet will go from this side or uh, we are not saying like to put two feet or three feet on this side but there's one component that the permeable uh, portion uh, is 1.97, mm -hmm. 
that you need to remove. Rest of uh, whatever is left, uh, because the maximum, maximum allowable is 24 feet. So you can take from any side, like uh, I, I, that, that's my understanding, whether left or the right, but uh, it has to be, uh, should not be more than 24. Or if it's a bit more, you, might, you may not have to cut as we discussed in the past, just add some perma perma permanent uh, barriers, some lampposts yeah. or some benches, but uh, this uh, permeable portion, you, uh, your client uh, has to remove. Of course, we will, we will do that. And, uh, so in my opinion, the best uh, solution, given the circumstances, is to go with the staff report. And because uh, we are fully, in, uh, personally me, in fully favor to remove the permeable uh, 1.97 feet. Yes. And the rest, uh, either you can remove or you don't need to cut. Uh, that's my understanding. You can simply add some... Uh, landscaping feature, some like permanent bench, lamp post, or some flower it's, yeah. bed. It's one feet of driveway, a little bit less so. I, I, I understand and I respect where you're coming from and I, w I would be okay to help you with that, but given the fact that the beautiful car being parked, I, I'm sorry, I cannot. Okay. Okay? Any okay. question, concern? If not, then I would like to move. And uh, I am in support of uh, staff recommendation. Mm -hmm. So motion, if no, uh, any question, concern? No. no so motion by Mr. Power to support staff recommendation. Do we have seconded? We have seconded by Mr. Toffler. All in favor? So everything according to okay. the staff recommendation, and I'm sure there will be solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Application A19115, Antonia Cotabat Robai. The property is located at 57 Black Diamond Crescent. You hear back? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> me again. No cars this time, okay? Again, my name is Ismatullah Amiri. I'm the authorized agent for this application. And uh, we are requesting a below grid entrance at the exterior side uh, yard, which is not permitted by the zoning bylaw. Um, okay, sure. For any members, any question, concern, comment at this point? None, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application against the four tests of a minor variance and have found that the application is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Uh, number one, that a building permit be obtained for the below grade entrance within 60 days of the final date of the decision of the committee. Number two, that the proposed fence be of an opaque construction and be erected and maintained in accordance with the sketch attached to the public notice and that the below grade entrance not be used to access an unregistered second unit. Number four, that the variance be approved only to the extent as indicated in the sketch attached to the public notice. And number five, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you understand and accept? Yes. Thank you. If no further uh, question, comment, looking for the motion to proceed. Motion to approve with staff recommendation by Ms. Duffler, seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are having a short break, and uh, we'll be back uh, at 11 o'clock. Calling application A19116, Elizabeth Fry Society of Peel Holton. The property is located at number six, Archibald Street. Good morning. morning. My name is Deborah Riddle. Last name is spelled R-I-D-D-L-E. 
I'm the executive director of the Elizabeth Rice Society of Peel Halton, and the property in conversation is 6 Archibald Street here in Brampton. Okay. Uh, anything else you wish us to add? No, not okay. at this time. Uh, Would members any uh, question, comment? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through the chair, staff are in support of this application, and we do not have any conditions at this time. Okay. So, short and sweet. Yep. If no question, okay, concern. Mr. Chair, if there's yep. no other questions from my colleagues. No. I move that we approve this application as presented. So, motion to approve as presented by Ms. Marcus, seconded by Ms. Duffer. All in favor? So approved. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here. <laughs> Calling application A19118, Silkland Portfolio Holding Inc. Property is located at 499 Ray Lawson Boulevard. Good morning. My name is Vipul Pupli, and I'm an agent for the landlord. Anything you wish us to add besides uh, the application? So uh, 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 I'm, I'm requesting for a minor variance uh, to permit a, 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 a running of an educational institution in, in the unit number 28. I'm already running the same um, um, uh, private school uh, in unit number 10 of the property and the landlord wishes me to move to another unit and that's the reason for this application. Okay. Uh, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Well, I have uh, one uh, letter uh, in opposition uh, from 21 Thorn Tree Crescent. It's basically sharing some concerns and uh, uh, to oppose this application. So I'm including that for the record. Staff, could you please bring your comments? Staff have reviewed this application are in, and are in support of it, uh, subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the use in 20, Unit 28 be limited to a gross floor area of 125 meters squared, which is 1,345 feet squared. And number two, that failure to comply with and maintain this condition shall render the variance null and void. Thank you. You understand and accept these conditions? Yes. If no further business, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve by Ms. Duffler with conditions and seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? It's approved. Thank you. Calling application A19-119-725054, Ontario Limited. Property is located at number 10, Cadetta Road. Anyone from this application? They were here? Through you, Mr. Chair, they were here earlier. They may still be on the break. Okay, so what we can do, maybe we can uh, put into the end of the agenda and uh, once they're back. Calling application A19120, Gurpreet Dalawal and Navdeep Mann. The property is located at 54 Hall Crescent. Representing my client, Gurpreet Kaliwal, residing at 54 Hall Crescent. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything special to add on to whatever is in the existing application. So all we are applying is the below grade entrance in the side. <coughs> and apparently, we are falling short of five inches on the side here. Okay. Uh, just one comment before I proceed the application. I was at the site. Yeah. 
and the sign was not displayed in the uh, in the lawn okay. at the front it was displayed in the window right. and when i asked the homeowner and uh, the impression i was that you're their agent the yeah. agent suggested so i don't think so that's the right practice the sign should be displayed okay. at the front maybe after yeah, yeah because when i made that comment so well, we did call I did actually, my site visit I did, I think, on Thursday or Friday. Okay. So I brought this to, uh, because I, when I was driving, I couldn't really find the house. I then I checked the map. Normally, when we go on any street, we see the sign and we come to know that this is the... No, we proper. did call him, but maybe there was some kind of... Mistake. Sure, no problem. That's <laughs> fine. Any members, any question, concern? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Three, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application against the four tests of a minor variance and have found that the application is supportable subject to the following conditions being imposed. Number one, that a building permit be obtained for the below grade entrance within 60 days of the final date of the decision of the committee or extended. Number two, that the below grade entrance not be used to access an unregistered second unit. Number three, that the owner removes the structure identified on the sketch attached to the public notice as to be demolished within 120 days of the final date of committee's decision. Number four, that drainage be directed away from the below grade entrance and drainage on the adjacent properties not be adversely affected. Number five, that the variance be approved only to the extent as indicated in the sketch attached to the public notice. And number six, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. Thank you. We got the conditions. Okay. Any members, if no further business? Sorry. So, I'm sorry. to the chair. If I can just say, no, it's a bit of a typo in the first one. I think the words are extended. Probably should not be at the end of that uh, condition. It's just... 60 days to obtain your building permit. Sorry, so what you're suggesting, uh, Mr. Steiger? Chair, on condition number one, uh -huh. uh, at the end it says, or extended, so it's an incomplete sentence. It's a, it's a bit of a, it's a or typo. To basically. extend should, that uh, discussion after Just the strike one. that. It should just be 60 days to obtain a permit. Okay, so the final date of the season modify. of the committee. Okay. Good. You think 60 days is enough? I guess you are well, already. So, uh, my first name is Tanvir, T A N V I R. My last name is Roy, R A I. Okay. And uh, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve with the amended condition uh, by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? Mr. Power. Calling application A190459519, Ontario Limited. The property is located at 187 Deerhurst Drive. and I appear as counsel on behalf of Now On Nanix Arta. They're located at 187 Deerhurst Drive. Uh, they are the tenant of the property, uh, which is located northeast corner of Deerhurst Drive and Wentworth Court. Uh, our client uh, wants to thank the committee for allowing this application to come back. Uh, and uh, although we've had some difficulty with this application, we are grateful to staff to uh, having given us the opportunity to discuss the application with them. Um, uh, the subject site currently contains a one-story industrial building with four commercial condominium units. Uh, the application before you is with respect to a temporary use permission for a place of worship and ancillary private school, which our planner is prepared to support. Uh, the applicant has advanced a rezoning application mm -hmm. for a permanent site, uh, and that's located north of uh, Countryside Drive and west of Coleraine Drive. 
the planner who has carriage of that file, who's a different planner on this uh, file before you, believes that the rezoning of that site can be completed within three years at minimum two, notwithstanding that uh, initially we sought a five-year temporary permission. Um, and we've been advised that they have already uh, commenced the pre-consultation application, retained all the relevant uh, consultants needed to do the necessary reports for that site. Um, so we now have been instructed to seek a three-year temporary permission at minimum two for this current site uh, until the rezoning on the other site has been completed. Uh, so quickly, by way of background, uh, now on Annex Artoth is a nonprofit organization and uh, operates a place of worship, uh, as you know, with an ancillary private school use for the Sikh community. Uh, the place of worship does operate seven days a week from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. is where the main service is provided as well as 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, and on Sundays as well. And there are main, uh, approximately 200 worshipers. And the private school operates Monday to Friday from 9 to 3.30 p.m. with approximately 250 students. The proposed uses uh, have operated on the site historically over 10 years without any complaint from the owners in the neighborhood until recently, which I will address momentarily. Um, there have been no adverse impacts of the surrounding neighborhood or beyond, and as mentioned, our client tra transitioning to a permanent site within Brampton. We're also seeking um, a temporary parking variance from 120 parking spaces to 66 spaces. The uses have operated, uh, again, for about 10 years without any parking issues or overflow parking. Uh, the current parking provided on site is sufficient for the temporary use of the pl uh, place of worship and accessory private school. And um, there has never been a requirement for additional parking, but uh, I do want to note that the same owner of this site does also own 42 uh, Wentworth, which is where that uh, dot is. And there is overflow parking that he does provide from time to time, approximately 30 parking spots, uh, usually on Sundays where there are special events. Um, and with respect to access, the subject site is on a corner lot, as you can see, and provides two full access points, one off of Deerhurst and another off of Wentworth. Um, with respect to the uh, Provincial D6 guidelines, which uh, was raised, uh, previously, it is our submission that no user that is operating legally within this zone can be forced to leave or be asked to cease to operate from our experience. Um, we do understand that there, there have been two letters of objection. Our client has had multiple conversations with both uh, neighbors uh, who have raised concerns, and I understand that uh, those conversations are still ongoing to try to settle their, their issues. Um, our client does advise, actually, as a result of direct conversation with direct propane, who I believe uh, is here, and I'm sure he'll speak uh, um, when, when the time's right, but I believe there's been some sort of agreement that with respect to the private school operation, um, the children, so the private school is in unit four, which is- The corner one? The furthest away, yeah, so, yeah, it's the corner piece there. And uh, they are confined within the building. There's no playground outdoor space for their children. Uh, and if they do seldom come out, uh, there, I believe, has been some agreement between um, uh, direct propane and our client that they will be at the westerly corner of the site. Uh, the new site will provide up outside space or outdoor um, space for the children. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to quickly go through the four-part minor variance test, uh, if I may. Um, it is our position that the proposed variance generally does meet the four tests. With respect to the general intent and purpose of the official plan, section 4.9.8.1 of the official plan sets out com excuse me, compatibility criteria for place of worship. Um, the proposed temporary uses are contained in an existing industrial building that enables its integration into the surrounding built form. Services take place outside of the regular business hours, uh, which effectively reduces any potential adverse impact on adjacent land uses. As mentioned, the students are uh, within, uh, confined within the building um, with major celebrations occurring on Sundays. The subject site is located along a collector road, which connects to a major arterial roadway, neither are a residential road. The application conforms to road network criteria, in our opinion. 
The building has sufficient on-site parking that can accommodate regular worship attendance. Uh, as mentioned, has operated for about 10 years uh, with current parking supply not being an issue. Pa patrons also do arrive <coughs> uh, staggered throughout the day. And uh, overflow parking is provided at 42 Wentworth. The temporary nature of an existing use does not take away existing uses for employment lands or prohibit the subject property or building to be used for industrial purposes in the future. Uh, furthermore, the legal uses currently within this zone will not be limited or precluded from operation as a result of our client's operation of the place of worship and uh, accessory private school. So I do submit that uh, uh, the temporary request is in keeping with the uh, intent and purpose of the official plan. With respect to general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, the temperate nature of the proposed use would not prohibit the intent of the zoning bylaw or prevent the subject site to be used for industrial three uses at a later date. Uh, with respect to parking variance, it generally meets the intent of the zoning bylaw in uh, my submission. Uh, demand for parking fluctuates throughout the day as mentioned, overall parking as mentioned is provided, and the proposed variances represent a minor deviation from the zoning permissions and parking requirements and have operated on the subject site for about a decade without any adverse impact as mentioned. And it does not limit future industrial uses on the property. Therefore, I do submit that the request is in keeping with the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. With respect to the third test uh, regarding appropriateness and desirability of the use of land, I submit that the proposed uses are contained, as mentioned, within an existing industrial building. They're not introducing a new user to the area, but temporarily maintaining an existing use that has operated without adverse impact on the surrounding area, nor detracted from the area's development potential. The place of worship operates at different hours and the surrounding land, land uses, and the private school operates solely within the confines of the building. There's no change to the existing one-story building form or parking layout to the proposed temporary use that it operates in. And as mentioned, our request is temporary for a three-year minimum, two-year permission. Therefore, I submit that it does meet this test. And finally, the request is minor in nature, as the proposed temporary use operates within the one building with no change to the exterior building size, scale, height, or massing. And as such, when the uh, three years are up, uh, the building will not need to be retrofitted. Therefore, the building will remain compatible. Um, the fundamental industrial uses are not being changed because the proposed use are temporary until the rezoning of the, the other site has been completed. And there are no loss of employment land or changes to the industrial building. And it will not impact the long-term supply of employment land and buildings. As well, I submit that the parking shortage is minor as services operate outside of peak hours and patrons arrive at staggered hours throughout the day. And additionally, overflow parking is provided. Therefore, the nature of the operation creates no nuisance, and it is my opinion that the request is minor in nature. Subject to any questions or comments, those are my submissions. Okay. Uh, any Comment at this point? Seeing none. Uh, anyone in the audience wishes to speak, sir, please come forward. Name and address, uh, Morning. and uh, you're, if you're an agent or representing, are you the owner of the My business? My name's Doug Fegan. Um, I'm the tenant in uh, 42 Wentworth Court that uh, she was speaking about, um, unit number two. And um, first, I must commend these people on the efforts that they make to support their community. I think it's great. The only issue I have is the proposed use of this facility will cause our business to be non-compliant and with that cause us not to be able to operate our business. We're licensed by the TSSA and there's one requirement that states that we cannot operate our business, which is a vehicle conversion center, within 300 feet of a school. So I have met with the uh, the people at 187 Jurors, and we've had discussions related to the proximity of the school within the building and locating it outside of that 300 foot uh, radius. And I've asked for qualified opinions <coughs> on the requirements of the code 
and the opinions that come back to me say that the code specifically states that we cannot be located within 300 feet of a school or any part thereof uh, of the building. So while this unit has a series of individual units in it, it's a, they're all part of the building. And I have asked the question again as to even if these are condominium units and they are technically separate places, um, where does that bring the zoning or, or, or the requirements of the TSSA? You and mean the distance uh, from where is to be measured? Uh, the distance is measured from the center of our conversion facility, 300 feet out, mm -hmm. um, and it intersects about half of the total structure. While the school is not within that area, it's not the way the code reads. The code reads that we can't be within 300 feet of a building containing a school, period. So, as I see it, um, approval of this causes us to be non-compliant, and this is our sole and primary business, which places us in a very difficult position. Uh, if I may ask you a couple of questions, sir. Yeah. How long your client is located at 42 Wentworth? Uh, how long, pardon me, sir? How long they are located in that location at 42? Uh, it's not the client, it's me. Oh, sorry. I am the operator. Oh, uh, my apologies. We've been there uh, seven years, almost eight years. Okay, so. When we located there, hmm. we were not aware of these activities carrying on. Had we been aware of them, we would not have considered this location. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, my take on this one is, uh, uh, this is not something new. They were there, I believe, for 10 years or so. Um, my understanding is yes. Uh, in our process of finding a location, uh, first thing we did was uh, confirm zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing we did was go to the city and confirm that our uses were allowed within the zoning, yep. and with that we proceeded to make our application. At, at no time in this process were we aware that a school was carrying on business. Uh, just to the follow-up comment on this one, uh, staff can, uh, the city staff can obviously uh, bring some timeline, like by when if they receive any application, but what my understanding is if the school uh, is being operated and I'm sure they must have obtained some sort of, uh, you know, uh, approvals from the ministry, if not uh, from the city. So it's not that this is something like completely new that... Uh, so the zoning doesn't allow that in this area. This is considered a sensitive use. I completely understand, but uh, if you go to, I'm sure the school, if the school is uh, operated there, being, being right now, is uh, it is there for a good number of years. I'm sure they must have gone to some of the ministry. Like, I'm just asking uh, as a question, well, maybe to the uh, staff, or maybe... Uh, I, I can't answer that question. No, I'm either. not asking to you, but I'm just... Uh, that's why I said uh, it's more of a comment. Uh, I know yes. uh, you can't answer on that one, but uh, obviously uh, any business owner in that neighborhood uh, could see the activity if uh, it's been there or, or if there's a sign or... Anything because this is not something happened in the last two two months or three months or six months time. So maybe Ms. Corzola, if you can please. Through you, Mr. Chair. I can confirm that the use is not permitted by the zoning bylaw, which is why this variance is before you today. I can also confirm that there has never been a building permit attained for either the public for either the private school or for the place of worship in this building. So no, the city had no knowledge of the establishment of this use, whether it was 10 years ago or five years ago. I couldn't comment on that. Okay. Anything else you wish just to add? No, that's all I have to add. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Hi. Hello. Good morning, my name is Grant Horan. I'm the uh, financial controller for Strata Aggregates. Okay. And we're located at uh, 120 Wentworth Court. Mm -hmm. um, and I submitted a letter on uh, April the 17th. Yes, we did. And it's just uh, that uh, we're not in favor of the proposal. Um, we have a safety concern, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we recognize that uh, this area is heavily industrial. And um, I 
guess that's uh, pretty well all I have to say. Okay. Uh, anybody else wishes to speak on this application being present? Seeing none, I would like to add uh, a couple of more, or at least uh, there's one letter, I guess it's from the Nine five one nine one eight Ontario Limited, uh, Orlando uh, Rodriguez, uh, the condo corporation uh, then stands in support of the minor variance application. Uh, no resolution of the board would be required. So, just I would like to add that for the record. And uh, there was total three letters, and the one. Uh, we have from uh, waste management uh, uh, expressing their concerns, uh, dated May 27, 2019, uh, for this uh, application. Can I just so, make a point of clarification, perhaps, or add for the committee's benefit? So this um, sketch, I believe, it was provided by direct propane to our client. Uh, by their consultant and just wanted to just I guess give some context to the 300 feet so approximately that's where the 300 feet uh, line would would be where the school would be operating within and outside of that 300 feet uh, requirement just for the committee's benefit uh, and as mentioned each unit is registered separately as a condominium mm -hmm. uh, not as one single block or single um, property and within each, there are concrete walls that separate each single unit from one another. So I'm um, just addressing the comment that there is one property. It's in fact, it's not, it's four separate condominiums. Okay. Uh, how many, uh, just a few questions uh, from my knowledge. Uh, roughly how many students are there? 250. And uh, grade, uh, what are their grades like? In uh, it, it's a range. Uh, I believe they start. I wish the client was here. I can't recall now it, because of the new site. They're changing. Like up to grade six, that. eight, or grade ten. It, it does go definitely up to grade eight. I just can't recall if there's high school students. Um, No problem. So what um, we can do, maybe uh, meantime, sir. Great time. Thank you. Okay, so up to uh, grade ten, uh, the school is. Uh, Any members any question concerning at this point, uh, or I'd like to go to uh, staff to hear their uh, side. So then maybe we can further ask question. Sorry, please, uh, Mr. Power first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When was Registered, you mean? With the, under the, uh, the school board, the ministry? Yeah, yeah. when was it uh, labeled as a school through the ministry? The ministry, I, I have to check with the client if it was. 2014. Okay. okay. Um, Good evening, Mr. Chair. Just, sure. um, uh, just a question. Um, they mentioned that the school is operated for 10 years in its current location. Um, we understand there's nothing registered with the city, so uh, neighbors were not um, aware mm -hmm. of, of the existence necessarily. Um, but how do you come before the committee now after 10 years? What, what was the impetus? Yeah, so th there was some, and I wasn't privy to this information, but there was some something raised, I don't know if it was by way of a complaint, by not a neighbor, uh, but there was an application before the committee um, a similar use and I, I don't know so they did receive an order or a letter from the city they, the city was advised at some point that the, this operation was taking place I, I can't speak to where that complaint came from or that or how the city was advised of that but it was by way of a letter to our client that uh, they were operating a place of worship in school that was not in compliance with the zoning bylaw 
which then uh, brought this application forward. So, yeah, just uh, my quick uh, comment. Uh, I guess uh, earlier last year, there was a couple of applications from Wentworth Court uh, uh, at the end, the two properties side by side. I guess during that, uh, if uh, I recall, we were at the uh, new building in that cham uh, temporary chamber. Uh, that's where it came uh, during the discussion uh, about the school. And I guess at the same time I came to know and uh, I guess the staff came to know about that time. And that's what I recall, um, mm -hmm. or it was told. Mm -hmm. yeah, Mr. Chair, just to, again back to um, realizing that um, you could not occupy the, the space according to bylaws, current bylaws. Um, did the school or the school owners And that's the other property I was referring to. Not I. It's a property that they've uh, they've been trying to work through. There's some difficulty with that because of um, conservation authority and so on. So they've been trying to relocate, uh, and now they've diligently expedited that. And there's been some solutions with staff. And I don't believe those discussions. There was a pre-consultation uh, with Ms. Here, but there's a subsequent meeting that needs to be had to expedite that. Um, and so that's really what their intention, especially in light of what's, what's happened now with this site, that you know, having received the letter to come into compliance, uh, they don't have a choice but to uh, relocate. They do need time to do that. And so as expeditiously as they can within the two to three years, they do plan on relocating from this site. And one last question. Sure, sure, sure. Mr. Chair, you had mentioned uh, at the beginning of your um, presentation to us um, you had quoted something, I don't know if it was a bylaw, um, whereby if you're already occupying a space, um, is there the, the wording that you could present again to me, uh, that if you're already occupying a space, is it with respect to other uses that are already in the industrial zone? No, just generally if, if I mean, in your situation or in, in your client's situation, they're already occupying a space. We know that they are not allowed to be there. Um, but given the fact that they are there, is there some sort of a... Um, Legal notice in for a city or a provincial uh, suggestion? I guess it likens it to being in a, in a home renting a space uh, Tenants cannot be evicted for a certain period of time, even if they haven't been paying their rent. I mean, that's the question that I'm asking. I thought that you had provided. No, some. I don't believe I did. Okay. Um, n not to that, uh, and I we haven't looked into that um, specifically, but just I guess the point that you know they've been there for a number of years and uh, they are trying to relocate, and there has been no issues for 10 years, and so now we're asking for a, a two-year minimum. Uh, to three temporary permission to be able to relocate is what really is the crux of this. Thank you. Okay, I, uh, I'd like to ask a few questions about the school specifically. If you have and the entire knowledge is good, if you have uh, uh, the people who run the school, if uh, they can come here. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best, but I don't think I'll do justice to it, so if, if I committee would permit, I may have to defer to. So your name and address for the record, please. Uh, name is Raghbir Chagars, uh, address Could 11. please Louis. spell it? R-A-G-H-B-I-R, -E last name Chagar, C-H-A-G-G-A-R, address 11 Newington in Brampton. Okay, could you please tell us about the school? Is this registered uh, with the Peel District School Board or the curriculum or private? Yeah, like it's, it's a private school and uh, registered with the Ontario Ministry of Ontario. Um, we start, it's fourth year in existence now, four complete years, and uh, yeah, it's a not-for-profit uh, school, but it, uh, fully registered with, with the ministry as a private school. Okay. Uh, grades uh, up to 10? It's up to grade 10, JK to grade 10, yes. And you have uh, all the students uh, in there, like from? So the, the students, I mean, the primary, it's a uh, uh, religious-based school, but with the full uh, education there as well. Uh, grades are going from JK to grade 10. The whole intent was to 
of the school is uh, we were getting a lot of requests from the community that uh, they're having a hard time at a public school from the perspective of uh, there's a lot of uh, challenges with the for lack of better words, a lot of drugs and stuff outside uh, that is taking place. They're looking for a safer environment, and at the same time, they want uh, the kids to be learning a bit of the law or you know Sikh heritage, the language as well at the same time. So within that, uh, you know, having those things into place, we were, you know, we started with about 50 students, and it quickly we didn't even advertise anywhere, and it's just the number of people that are asking for it just keeps on growing and growing, and so. We do want to locate to the new uh, location. We've got to acquired 25 acres. Uh, uh, applications in process with planning, and the sooner we can go there, that's what our real goal is, to leave this place. We did not think we'd be here this long. We've been try trying to you know, secure a place for the last four years, a place that's good, you know, safe, safe and the right environment for the kids. They need the fields as well, so we'd like to take them to the fields out there where we have our own place, but uh, it's really, our intent wasn't to stay here for this long. It was much sooner to get move move away from this location and get to the right location. It's just taken much longer to get there. Uh, the school hours are uh, 9 a.m. to 3.30. Yes, yes. Uh, from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Sorry? 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So given the parking component uh, because of the age of the students, mm -hmm. so I believe they've been dropped off there? So we've got about 70% of our students are on the buses, so they come on the bus, 70% of them. Okay. So that's a big, big, uh, large number of students are coming through busing, so it, it uh, makes uh, traffic much more easier. If we, if, you know, if it was the other way around, we'd have a lot more cars coming into the place in the morning, so. Mm -hmm. And even with the cars, it's not individuals. People are, you know, carpooling most of the time, and uh, so the level of traffic is fairly low in the mornings and the evenings. So there's no scope uh, of uh, parents being walking, holding their hands, uh, mm -hmm. the None kids of that. on the on the roads because given the fact it's a truck zone and the the, trucking area. Yeah, there's none of this. Uh, nobody's walking to school. Not even a single parent, single child's walking to school. They're getting dropped off. Just one thing I would like to ask uh, staff: uh, uh, Is there any incident of uh, traffic or violation has been reported in last? four, five, or ten years uh, if uh, in the past or any other concern uh, in regards to the place of worship or, uh, or the school? Through you, Mr. Chair, I don't have access to any kind of traffic violations. Um, I can confirm that I don't see any record of any parking violations associated with on-street parking in excess of three hours, which would be the only thing that I would have access to in my system. Any question or concern at this point by committee member to, uh, especially because we have someone who can give us more answers regarding the school. Roughly 250 students. For 250 students, yes. How those numbers goes this much? In such Sorry, a short how did time? they grow? It's really word of mouth and a demand from the community for two two things. I'd say one is a safer place, mm -hmm. people safe, play, feel a little safer because it's religious based. Uh, they think there are better values being instinct. I don't, you know, I grew up in a public school. I have nothing against it, but it's just people's thoughts, right? They have different mindset. They they like that. And uh, secondly, it's um, the quality of education. I think people are looking for that, and uh, they think they're getting good education. It's a not-for-profit. It's a very reasonably priced. We're not trying to there to make money off the kids. It's whatever we can make and pay pay the teachers with it and pay our bills and. Um, and that's the whole intent, and this is the other reason probably why it's strong growth. Four years, and we haven't advertised a single time, not even single, once out there. So. Let's say the committee consider giving you the conditional approval for the school. Yes. Right now it's 250, and by the time it go 350. Uh, we, we can't go beyond 250. We are very careful with the class size and the amount of space we have. We will not grow beyond 250. Any other uh, alternate, uh, I want to ask, uh, sorry, the staff, uh, one quick question. Uh, the gentleman just indicated, and uh, so has the lawyer, that they have uh, another property uh, in the city. 
countryside and uh, Coleraine you mentioned. It's right. co corner of countryside and Coleraine, yes, 25 acres. Mm -hmm. So do, are we in, like there, is there some process going on on that property and what, what's the staff's opinion, like how long it can take and because given the fact the area is uh, kind of new and it's not really, uh, uh, I know there are uh, developments in the area. I just maybe could show this for the committee. I don't know if staff's seen that yet, but that we hope to share that. With the next. Can you please, uh, uh, so the countryside, uh, uh, okay, yes. So you can see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Staff, uh, do we please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Sorry, the application that uh, the city has for that property, a countryside on the north, on the north side of Countryside Drive and west side of Coraline Drive, mm -hmm. uh, the application is, is only a pre-consultation application, mm -hmm. which was received a number of months ago, mm -hmm. and it was reviewed, and uh, the application was considered to be premature, and uh, the feedback, a verbal feedback, was provided to the applicant. Mm -hmm. And it, it was highlighted to them that there are a number of uh, uh, major issues with this site. Number one is the fact that the, the uh, secondary plan relating to not only this area but including a larger area is currently under appeal to the OMB, to the LPAT. Okay. And uh, all those part of the appeal has been vacated, but the, the, this property and some other area is still subject to the appeal. <coughs> and uh, the uh, and secondly, uh, there are a number. There, there is a there is a road network proposed through the uh, secondary plan, and it is quite possible that in future that road, some of those roads may go through this property. So, so at this at this moment, it's not clear how this property would be impacted uh, with the implementation of the secondary plan. Mm -hmm. And another issue is that there is a, a creek going through this property. Uh -huh. And there is a, an environmental assessment happening in currently, and as a result, the creek is going to be reconfigured. And uh, we are not sure how that will impact this property. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there are a couple of other issues, and as a result, we believe that uh, uh, even proposing a development proposal on this property at this moment would be premature, because we don't know how how much of the area would sure, be, sure, sure. be impacted yeah. and how much would be left for the proposal. But I guess don't they have, have uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we don't have a zoning application for this property at all. Okay. Uh, I recall uh, that appeal that not just subject to this property, that was in general appeal, uh, that was sometime last year to LPAT, uh, that's what you're referring to? It has been there for a number of, uh, for, for some time. Uh -huh. And uh, it is now specifically for this property and some other area. Because for the rest of the area, uh -huh. it has been vacated. But for this property and some other area, the appeal is still pending. Is that by the landowners group? That appeal by the landowners group? I, I don't have the details. Okay. The that, that appeal is by the city. And just want to comment on the creek. We we are working with the city closely, kind of, and the TRC uh, to we separated the land for if you see in front of you the future Rainbow Creek corridor. Mm -hmm. We we uh, we you know we want to make it into three parcels A, B, and C. So we would not touch anything that's near the creek itself. So we will leave that place. We won't develop anything close to the creek. So there's a separate area that will be left alone until the creek gets settled. So there'll be plenty of room for the creek to realign it. We understand what's happening with the creek. It's far from being complete in time, you know, before we move in there. That's why we chose to build whatever our building, whatever we want to do, far left of the creek itself. And sorry, just to, just to address the fact that a number of concerns that were raised at the pre-consultation meeting, our planner and consultant are looking into and do uh, endeavor to have a meeting uh, with staff again. Uh, soon to address those concerns and so they have not seen this um, so just wanted to put it up just to give you some context to what we're talking about with respect to the other site. Sure uh, 25 acres is a lot of land and I'm sure it can work out uh, even if the creek is there but uh, uh, sorry please go ahead. Sorry Mr. No. Steiger. No, so second time my apologies. I, I mean, uh, this uh, pre-consultation has a whole range of its own issues, including that it's a sensitive land use in an area planned for employment lands. I mean, it's the same issue we're dealing here on a much larger scale, and they're going to have to deal with that as part of that application. So 
um, along with you know the proposed roads that are intended to go through and environmental impacts. So, um, just to provide, you know, it's not going. I mean, there's going to be a fair bit of work has to be done on that, and not necessarily a foregone conclusion. You know, in terms of what's what the staff position would be on. Uh, just on the same note, uh, uh, I would ask staff to have their comments. I don't think so. We have yet. Uh, Yes, so I guess Mr. Mahmood, uh, could you please weigh in staff's comments in regards to particular this application? And thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this this uh, <coughs> uh, pr property, uh, this application proposes uh, a place of worship and an accessory uh, private school. Uh, the, the private school is uh, uh, de uh, uh, designated as a sensitive land used by the official plan and both the school and the place of worship is designated as sensitive land used by the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change Compatibility Guidelines. Uh, the property is designated uh, industrial and uh, employment areas in the city's official plan and uh, the city's uh, uh, and, the, and the city's policies in Required that the places of worship will be permitted in limited locations, uh, subject to the section 4.9.8 of the official plan. There are a number of criteria. S uh, policy uh, 4425 of the official plan uh, provides that the places of worship of up to 3,000 3, square meters of cross flow area shall be permitted on lands designated industrial in the official plan. That are located at the <coughs> that, that are located at the edge of an employment area, unless it is demonstrated that there are land use conflicts with the adjacent uses. The, it further says that the places of worship are not intended to be located within heavy industrial areas, categorized as Class Three in the industrial categorization cri criteria of the Ministry of Environment. Policy four four two nineteen. <coughs> Further, it requires that in areas containing existing heavy industrial uses or on lands in proximity to such areas, the range of permitted uses shall be limited to avoid an introduction of additional uses which are incompatible with heavy industrial activities. And heavy industrial, a heavy industry is defined by the official plan in accordance with the Ministry of Environment D uh, series guidelines and generally refer to the to those characterized by large volumes of materials and products, fugitive emissions, outside storage, truck traffic, etc. And the policy requires that the city shall deny applications for development of residential or other sensitive land uses within and adjacent to designated industrial areas if such approval would result in these industrial uses Ceasing to, be, ceasing to be in compliance with all pertinent standards or would inhibit development of designated industrial lands for the purpose, purposes permitted by the plan. Uh, the, the subject property uh, containing the existing and proposed place of worship and accessory private school is located within an area designated for heavy industrial uses. It is uh, surrounded by existing heavy industrial uses, including uh, manufacturing waste transfer or processing stations, medical waste transfer or processing stations, concrete processing unit, and the concrete batching or aggregate uses that fall within uh, class three of the Ministry of Environment D-Series guide, guidelines. This property is not located at the edge of the employment area, uh, lands area, and the proposed land uses are located within the prohibited setbacks and influence areas from a number three, uh, from uh, class three industries. Therefore, uh, staff are of the opinion that they are not compatible with the existing heavy industrial uses or the range of future heavy industrial uses permitted in this area. And if the proposed variances are allowed, the noise, dust, odor, vibration, and fugitive emissions from the surrounding class three industrial uses Will, will adversely impact the proposed sensitive land uses. Moreover, uh, 
uh, even more importantly, the proposed variances will bring the currently the current heavy industrial uses in non-compliance with all pertinent standards and will inhibit development of designated industrial lands for the purposes permitted by the official plan. Therefore, the staff is of the, of the opinion that the proposed variances do not conform to the uh, official plan policy. Uh, another policy of the uh, official plan pertains to the uh, area for the, the operating applies to the properties which are located within the Lester B. Pearson International Airport operating area. So that policy says that the places of worship that include a sensitive uh, land use as defined by the provincial policy statement shall not be permitted in areas where they are likely to experience an adverse effect from, contamina uh, from contaminant discharges generated by a major facility or within the Lester B. Pearson International Airport operating area. Uh, similarly, policy 4.6.15.3.1 requires that all <coughs> sensitive development shall be directed away from the potential uh, man-made hazards. Policy 4.6.15.3.2 further says that the hazardous facilities shall be separated from the incompatible land users and buffer zones shall be designated around these facilities. The designation shall include separation distance and other requirements specific to the identified hazard materials. Uh, policy 4.8.5.8 requires that sensitive land users shall, be, shall only be permitted in proximity to a waste disposal use provided that they comply with policy 6.6.15.3 and they do not intrude into established minimum separation distances described in, in the policy 4.8.5.8. Uh, I will read the, that policy 4.8.5.9, which requires that the hazardous waste transfer use or hazardous waste chemical or manufacturing uh, in uh, intermediaries or medical veterinary or pathological waste and me mechanical st sterilization of waste may only be permitted on lands designated industrial provided the use is located a minimum of 300 meters from a sensitive land use. Another policy which is uh, uh, the next policy to this policy requires that the hazardous, wa hazardous waste processing use for hazardous uh, waste chemicals or manufacturing intermediaries or medical veterinary or pathological waste and, thermo and thermal de degradation used for medical veterinary or pathological waste may only be permitted on lands ident uh, designated industrial provided the use is located a minimum of 1,000 meters from a sensitive land use. So as indicated uh, uh, in these policies, the, the, the official plan policy permits hazardous uh, waste transfer, uh, waste uh, transfer or processing uses only if they are located at a minimum distance of 300 to 1,000 meters from the sensitive land uses. In the current case, the all class three uses surrounding the proposed place of worship or accessory school are located at a distance less than the minimum required distance from the sensitive land uses. The proposed uses, which is a school and a place of worship, uh, do not meet these Ministry of Environment or the official plan criteria. If allowed, the proposed variances will bring the current heavy industrial uses in, in non-compliance with the applicable standards, uh, standards and will hinder development of designated industrial lands for the purposes permitted by the official plan. The proposed variances do not conform to the official plan, <coughs> not, notwithstanding the land use conflicts described uh, in the report. Staff have examined the Gore Industrial South uh, secondary plan area pol uh, policies as well. The, these policies of the secondary plan allow some of the land in the industrial designation to be used for uh, other than industrial purposes, provided they primarily serve the, prime, the principal use, being industry, 
and provided that such other users do not serve the users of land within, the, within another land use classification. And it also requires that the industrial users within the industrial designation are also required to minimize uh, potential conflicts between these different uh, classes of the use. And uh, uh, as uh, the committee is aware that this application is for a temporary use, not a permanent use, so the, so the official plan policy 5.10.1 5, 5 uh, one and two and three of the official plans speak to this, which, which uh, say that the city may permit a temporary use provided the temporary use does not create or aggravate any situation detrimental to adjacent, uh, to adjacent complying uses or does not interfere with the development of adjacent uses that are developing in accordance with the official plan. The proposed temporary use, which is a place of worship and accessory private school, being sensitive land users, are incompatible with the existing and future uh, class three heavy industrial uses permitted in the area. Therefore, permitting such uses, even for a temporary period of time, will render the existing heavy industrial uses non-compliant with the applicable standards and inhibit future development of the permitted industrial uses in the area. Therefore, uh, in view of uh, the policy that I have quoted, uh, staff consider this application to be uh, not non-conforming to the official plan. And for similar uses, uh, staff of the, of the view that the proposed variances uh, to temporarily permit the place of worship and accessory private school and reduced parking for these uses will render the existing uh, heavy industrial uses in the area non-compliant with the pertinent city and provincial standards. And uh, it, will, it will also expose the proposed sensitive uses to the hazardous impacts from surrounding industrial uses. Therefore, the proposed uses do not meet the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. And for these very uses, uh, these very reasons, staff also consider that the proposed uh, uses are not only uh, uh, inconsistent with the official plan or the zoning bylaw, but also they do, do not constitute desirable, uh, uh, to be desirable for appropriate development of the land, and they are not considered to be minor in nature. So as uh, they do not meet the four, uh, four tests for the minor variance, uh, staff of the view that uh, the application A19-09045 uh, be refused. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud, for the lengthy <laughs> report. And I'm sure you can have some water now <laughs> after speaking <laughs> that much for long. Uh, okay, uh, to the lawyer. Anything to comment on Mr. Mahmoud's report? Uh, no, just uh, uh, as mentioned, and I don't want to take the committee's time to reiterate, but again, it's a temporary use. It's within the confines of the building. There's been no issue for 10 years, and we are expeditiously working get to the new site and the discussions with the two neighbors are still uh, continuing this was our last opportunity to be before you today we do uh, the client will be diligently working with the two neighbors to try to address their concerns which uh, I believe you have and hope to be able to settle those issues so I don't know if there's anything you would like to members any question concerns Ms. Uh, Mr. Yep. You, Mr. Chair. Um, to the applicant the new applicant there are some existing buildings on the property. On the, is, I'm not sure if that's your property. Uh, You've got parcel those, A, those B, and not, C. Sorry, uh, in the new application, those are not part of our. Uh, they are not part of our land. Okay. Those, those three buildings. Are there any existing buildings on the property? There's no existing building. No. Is the land serviced? Land is serviced uh, yeah, on Colerain side for sewerage, on water on countryside. Yes. Okay. <coughs> thank you. And just um, a question, I'm going to pose it to both parties. Um, to the city, um, no, I'll ask the applicant first. If we, um, if we support the staff's suggestion to refuse the application, what would that mean um, to the school and to the students? Is there any temporary facility available 
It's, it's a very good question, and we've been diligently looking around the city of Brampton. Unfortunately, there are not very as many as, not many, there's non-existence of any institutional lands that are available that are ready to go anywhere within Brampton that are in the east. I mean, we've been looking at the east side, that's where we are. We have, we've been actively looking as a backup, uh, you know, uh, as any responsible person, you can't just say, hey guys, we're done, you can't have come to school, so we have to look for a backup plan. So far, we have not been successful at finding a suitable uh, place right now. It will be a, quite a bit of a hardship for 250 students, especially who've been there for the last four years, uh, from JK2, the, the little ones, and they've they made such a bond with their people, other students, the teachers, and everybody there. So it's, it's a, it'll have a very, very strong impact on, on the students itself. Okay, and if I can pose a question to the city. If we, um, okay, one question first before I ask. There is no order to comply on this property, is that correct? There is absolutely orders to comply, both for construction and change of use without a permit, as well as the zoning violation. Okay, and how long have they in, been in place? Just about a year now. A year. From the summer of last year. Okay, thank you. And then uh, my next question would be, if we support the staff, um, meaning refusing the application, what happens with the occupants? Can you walk us through the steps that happen? Assuming that they're going to have a hardship and they won't be able to, um, within 20 days of this application, vacate. What, what are the steps that the city would have to implement? You, any decision today to refuse the variances would mean that the use is, as it currently is being operated is in non-compliance with both the building code and the zoning bylaw. The matters are already, to my knowledge, in prosecution, so obviously there's a, peer, there's a process that is the next step in enforcement where someone chooses not to comply or cannot comply with the zoning bylaw and they are not able and successful to obtain a variance, then the city will take them to court and prosecute. Um, the compliance deadlines, as you can imagine, are well over a year old, so there, there are no extensions at this point in time. Um, so it would be as though any property owner would have to bring their property into compliance, obviously with as much um, time as they need, but certainly as soon as possible. Thank you. Any other question by any committee members? Anyone in the audience or any of the, the two neighbors uh, wants to add something? Just sorry to clarify um, again to the applicant. So orders to comply have been in place for a year. Um, I think what I'm understanding is that the place of worship has been there for 10 years. The school has been there for four years. Um, I should clarify that. Uh, school, the, the elementary school has been for, uh, there for years. We had what we called like a Sunday school, but it was seven days a week in the evenings. We had children coming in along with the temple where they're, we, where they're being taught um, the language, the history, and we had about 250 students coming through there as well for the last 10 years. So I should clarify, the, the elementary school has been in place for uh, four years. Okay, and the, the, the place of worship and the school are a tenant in the building? Yes, we are ten tenants in the building. Okay, and the landlord signed a lease with you? Um, yes not recognizing that this was not um, an approved use, I assume. Understood, yes. Just a follow-up uh, question. Uh, how long the lease you have? Uh, we're under negotiation for, to extend the lease right now. So uh, the, we're waiting for what happens here before we uh, you know, extend the lease or not extend the lease. But what is the leftover right now? Uh, we've got two years. Two years? Yes. Okay. Any further question, comment, before I put together my thoughts on this? <laughs> Mr. Power? Sure, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> so the gentleman who has the auto parts or the motor configuration, um, if we move to approve when the school, or should the school become um, legal, uh, my business becomes non-compliant. Can the city comment on that? I'll 
through you, Mr. Chair, sure. um, respond from a zoning perspective. And really, the zoning bylaw dictates permitted uses on the property. So the land used in compliance with the zoning bylaw on the adjacent property will remain in compliance, and there would be no ability for the city to issue an order for non-compliance with the zoning provisions. I think the compliance issues um, associated with the use are those associated with the TSSA license, if I'm not mistaken, and that's a provincial oversight body. Correct. Uh, just a question. What's the distance for uh, this gentleman's business versus the school? Is, do we have any idea the exact distance? The distance from the property to property, they are attached. So they're properties that are adjacent to one another. The approximate distance from the area being operated as the private school from the building and the unit being occupied under TSSA regulation is approximately 90 meters. May I give you the wording that I was given from the uh, sure. engineers that uh, reviewed this? The TSSA branch standard number nine requirements state that not any part of a school building is located within 300 feet of a vehicle conversion center. The proposal details that a single unit of a building will operate as a school as part of the building in which a school is to is, is an operating operation is within the 300 foot proposal and would make the vehicle conversion center non compliant. And if I may add, this is, I believe <coughs> your engineer provided this uh, sketch, right? That the 300 feet is that yeah. red line. So our the school would essentially be outside of that? You're referencing a unit within a building, you know, and the statement is that a building that houses a school. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a matter of semantics with words. Um, the TSSA tends to be very conservative in their opinions, mm -hmm. and and um, I don't personally think they would see it that way. So I just submit it's a separate building with concrete walls and registered as a parcel register separately from all the other four condo units. What my comment on this particular is uh, uh, just this scenario. Uh, what I would personally like to do, I would like to uh, attach the unit number uh, if we are going into that direction that uh, to be operated from this particular unit number even though not the entirety of the building uh, I would uh, like to add the unit number uh, just one more uh, thought I, 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 uh, um, I was thinking to uh, say that earlier regarding uh, Pearson Airport uh, comments on that one just in the same area uh, we have many, is that something related to religious usage? Because in the same uh, area where this uh, is going, we have, I, I have seen some other religious uh, institutions as well, especially on Gore Road, uh, Gore and, uh, Gore and uh, what I would say, uh, Castlemore Road, uh, McQueen area. So, uh, I understand it's because of the noise, I guess. Uh, that was one of the comments. Uh, yeah, Norman? thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that policy applies to the places of worship which have a sensitive land use, like a private school as an accessory use. Mm -hmm. So that is why that policy ap applies to this place of worship. I do recall there was one on airport and Williams Park where, and I guess that's legal non-confirming use there and that's why that does exist on Williams Parkway before the train track. I pass by there sometime and I always wonder that why this place is here because uh, three, four years back another application came from within the same next door building but we did not uh, allow them. So I understand uh, the concerns. Uh, what my, uh, it's, it's very hard for us uh, uh, to make the decision on these, uh, this kind of application. Uh, at the same time, uh, if this is in front of us, we need to act uh, accordingly. Uh, what my personal uh, thoughts are, uh, after listening to others, uh, the one side is saying, uh, if we refuse this application, if we refuse this application, uh, what are the consequences and how we are going to deal with. 
uh, I would definitely go fully against if this is something new use or something is proposing something. Given the fact the amount of students uh, being there, uh, I understand the safety concerns uh, being uh, the location, especially around the trucks, uh, given the fact uh, the most majority of the students uh, transported by the buses there. We had another uh, private school, uh, I would say in ward number seven, uh, close to Boved. Uh, it was in the news for some time, uh, where uh, it's surrounded by the houses. So that doesn't mean that location around this zone for the private school uh, is, is not appropriate. I, I understand the concern and the zoning perspective, but if we have somewhere uh, everything does meet according to the zoning, uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about Maitland uh, area uh, where we have another private school. Uh, they, they, they purchased that from uh, some previously exist, uh, uh, there was a school, but the, the traffic concerns are there as well. Uh, but at least uh, the good thing is uh, in the last four or five years or so, uh, according to the city record or at least uh, when uh, our staff does check, there's no violation notice or no, no incident has been reported. So part of me uh, is saying that uh, uh, I am uh, in support of allowing them for two to three years or whatever the minimum limited time we can provide uh, for this operation. Uh, within this time, uh, I would encourage them to work uh, uh, as properly as possible for them to work with the staff for their new site. Uh, if not, then if they can make some another secondary arrangements uh, meantime uh, in the city, not too far if some other place can be secured uh, for those, uh, uh, for those uh, students. Because that's what uh, I'm having a hard time ever since this application came. Uh, uh, I would be, uh, I would fully agree with all the comments. Uh, in very first place, if this is a new application. Uh, and I do understand uh, the, the both the gentlemen here their concern, I'm a pro-business person, I always say in almost every meeting, I don't want any, any business uh, to uh, jeopardize or come in, uh, come in some sort of hardship when we do anything. Maybe we can just limit uh, the unit number. Uh, or the next solution is if we can have some more time is uh, uh, to measure the exact distance, but given the fact uh, uh, we, this application has all, already been referred multiple times. Uh, I guess uh, the committee uh, should make a decision today. And uh, that's where uh, I would suggest uh, sometime two years minimum or three years, or uh, given the fact we are in uh, July, or we can go two and a half years uh, till end of, uh, I would say, 19, uh, 21. So, and that's good enough time for for, uh, for the management to look for alternates, uh, especially, uh, especially with, the, uh, with the kids. Uh, that's all I have to say, and uh, I would like to uh, mention that you know, the number should not grow. If they can make less, that's, that's better. Uh, the more students, uh, obviously, they need more space and stuff, uh, but uh, I, I am satisfied with the parking uh, situation, not in general with the given the parking numbers, but uh, in general, uh, not only just this religious organization, some other religious uh, organizations uh, such as church or uh, some other religious uh, uh, places, a majority of them, I, would, I should not say majority of them, but many of them are located in the industrial sites and uh, they most of the time that the people uh, goes to them, uh, to those places during the weekend and when other businesses are uh, not that, uh, uh, like uh, facing less traffic. So I am satisfied on uh, that side. Uh, again, I would, uh, I would be the first one to refuse the application if this is something uh, coming forward to propose uh, something, a brand new application. Uh, given the fact it's, it's been there for a number of years, 
uh, and uh, it just came in a, I would call a weird way when last year uh, there was back and forth going two uh, lengthy massive applications and I recall uh, my time talking about those applications for hours in multiple occasions. So uh, just back to those ones, I'm open for suggestions, but my personal suggestion is uh, to uh, approve for minimum two years or two and a half years uh, so that they can, or we can uh, put this time, but I would encourage the management to find the solution as soon as possible. If they have some solution within next one year, if they can look for uh, some another arrangements, uh, that'll be great. Uh, otherwise, they'll be back here within uh, within the time frame. Uh, Ms. Marcus, or please go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, this is a very difficult application because there are kids involved. Um, so I, I concur with um, a lot of the chair's comments. Um, I tend not to like to defer applications um, unless we can see that something new may come forward. In this case, I would actually propose that we defer for a couple of meetings. Um, and that is, um, I think a concern is the other businesses in the area, that this can't have an impact on them. We can't try to help this situation and then impact and nullify other businesses. I don't think that's appropriate. Um, but I think there's a way to work together and I don't know what that is. I'm speaking for myself. Um, so the, the one uh, comment that the chair made I concur with, we seem to have a little bit of an issue with um, the one gentleman's business being um, uh, impacted by this based on a dimension. Um, if you're outside of that dimension, it's now the building that's in question. Um, I think a little bit of clarification would be good in terms of that. Um, in terms of uh, being able to find a temporary location, um, I think that's the benefit, ultimately the benefit to everybody. Um, if we provide a little bit more time to do that. And then on the other side, I appreciate that you're going to great lengths. You've purchased another property and you're trying to go through the development. But if we could have a better um, understanding of what that uh, result is, where we stand within that, um, we see there are various complications in hand. I don't know if that means there's a five-year concern so even if we were to look at a two to three year temporary situation with that um, application actually uh, take a considerable more period of time. We're not aware of the process, I think, between yourselves and the city, you can come back with some um, better understanding of the length of time for that. Um, and recognizing that there's an order to comply out there uh, we don't want to take much more time, but um, this is a very sensitive area and there are kids involved. I think for me that's the two, two very challenging situations and the third component, the other businesses in the area. I, I really don't think we should be uh, impacting them. So if I could make a, um, a suggestion that we defer and come back and find out um, precisely what the uh, determination is in terms of distances so that there is no impact for the other business or the other two businesses that are presented uh, uh, or represented here today. Uh, secondly, that there's a, a, a huge effort made for a temporary facility so that we don't have to look at this or we have to look for a lesser period of time. And third, <coughs> just understanding the, the, the new site, what what is um, an estimated or reasonable estimated timeline for getting that um, into construction and occupancy. That, that would be my, my suggestion. It's, it's a little bit unusual, but uh, I think we have too many considerations in front of us. I uh, agree with you, uh, uh, Ms. Doffler, uh, but at the same time, uh, but at the same time, what uh, I would like to see in this uh, if we don't know by deferring what we are going to achieve, 
that's where I'm having a hard time. Like there, it's not that the first time we deferred this. We already uh, did a couple of times, and <coughs> now uh, if uh, <coughs> and if uh, if now we do for the further couple of dates, uh, I don't think so. Uh, there will be uh, any solution or more some, something more to come like uh, and that's my personal opinion uh, on this given the fact uh, as I mentioned this is not something new this has been there and uh, there's no uh, uh, complaint or uh, anything got reported which was not really uh, uh, not really in city's racket I would say uh, I Part of me is uh, uh, understand that if we defer this application to further couple of meetings, uh, that uh, might help. But in which direction, that I don't know. So that's where uh, that's where is my uh, struggle is. So I, I can see the two uh, committee members, on my left and right, uh, would like to see. So uh, Mr. Power first, and then Ms. Marcus. building or the unit? Like I'd like to see the actual, because at the end of the day, the TSSA outranks the city of Brampton. Yes. And, you know, you can't afford to take away somebody's business. You know, I just, I, I, I struggle. I, I see the kid side of things, but it, you, you can't cost somebody their business. Mm -hmm. I uh, understand, uh, and uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, can I have uh, Ms. Marcus, please? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my struggle is exactly the same as my colleagues. <clears throat> I struggle with the fact that there's 250 kids that go to school, and uh, they're at, um, at jeopardy of losing their spaces, but I'm also struggling with the fact that there's a gentleman here that uh, has a living, makes a living out of this. And uh, I would not want to make a decision that impacts on this gentleman's living uh, in any way, shape, or form. Um, I favor the only reason why I favor us delaying this for another one or two meetings is only because I'd like to have an, a stronger opinion as to what, what, how your business would be impacted. And that would be uh, an opinion by the TSSA. And um, I have a really difficult time in deciding any other way without uh, having that opinion before me. Um, and that would also give you the time to keep on looking for another temporary location. If so, you'd find it something that's more suitable and, more, and safer for the children, frankly, and uh, a place where they could maybe get some fresh air <laughs> throughout the day. But, um, that's what's stopping me from making a decision today. After listening to three of my uh, committee colleagues, uh, just one question to the staff before uh, you can talk further. Uh, is there any way staff can help uh, in measuring that distance from the unit uh, where the school is currently being operated, Ms. Kozola? Through you, Mr. Chair. The, the the accurate description of the distance between the unit is roughly corresponding with that red line that's on. But what I cannot confirm is that TSSA finds that that is an acceptable arrangement. The letter that was read to you from the TSSA by the affected landowner suggests that if it's any portion of the building that houses the school, and certainly there are a vast portion of this building is within that 90 meters, which is 300 feet. So whether or not you want to have this owner obtain confirmation, written confirmation from TSSA to verify that the unit is sufficiently distanced or whether or not the building in itself has to be at least 
90 meters and 91 meters away um, is certainly something you can either defer and wait for or impose as a condition. I, I cannot speak for TSSA as to what you know would be in a suitable arrangement from their perspective. Ms. Marcus, please. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, my confusion is, are we referring to the building as a building envelope in total, or are we referring to the building as an unit? And uh, I would like to have clearer uh, opinion as on, on that specifically, because I think that that alone would also inform us to a different way of how we would uh, proceed. In the, and I, I'm the last one that wants to be deferring applications all the time. It's just not my style, and I don't think that it's uh, in, your, uh, in, in anybody's uh, benefit. But I think that uh, we need clarification in that. Okay. Uh, what, uh, I, I could see the gentleman is up there, and uh, you're, you're more than welcome to come again and talk. Uh, but, my, uh, but my simple comment is, uh, what I would look personally, the unit. I would not look uh, the entire building, because there are other businesses, or other businesses being operated uh, from there. I, if, if, if the kids are not, I do understand uh, the point where if TSA, TSSA is going to look the entire building, but I personally won't because I could see the barriers. I, I said those of industrial units. It's, it's not that uh, the partitions are made by the drywall or within the same. Uh, the building could be maybe a few more meters on left or right, but uh, I would see where. I don't want to penalize some somebody, uh, those kids, if they are not into that corner. So I would, regardless of what TSSA's comments about the building, uh, I would look into uh, the specific unit where uh, that use is. Sir, please go ahead. I was just trying to offer uh, any further information sure. if questioned. The reference distance is 300 feet, so roughly 100 meters. And that's a reference from the center to a building housing a school. It doesn't say one end, the other end, it's a reference to the building. The, the standard in question is TSSA branch standard number nine. You can look it up, it's online. It's publicly available and, and the definitions will also be defined in there. But it's not a reference to a unit, it's a reference to a building. That's, that's where the issue comes in here. I understand fully uh, with this reference and uh, it's good to know I would uh, surely uh, love to look but the general intent are just on the pace of the principal if I see if there are some other businesses being operated over there uh, in uh, because this is right at the corner uh, then I would understand that this is where they are measuring from but when physically but when physically where my struggle is when physically those students are not being present in those units, I don't want to count or measure the distance from those ones. There's even though, there. even though, sorry, even though it's not clear there, but what my uh, struggle is, uh, if they are not physically being present there, I don't want to count the distance from there. Their standard involves a number of calculations. This is one stipulation that they say do not do. Otherwise, our calculations involve the square footage and the uses of the buildings. It's, it's a much more detailed calculation than saying if there's a school within this radius, you can't do it. It's a much more cal uh, detailed exactly. calculation. No, I, uh, sir, I do understand. But at the same time, this application is not he here uh, for any other units. It's, the application we are dealing is not for the entire building. It's for 187 Deerhurst Drive, that's the address, units one to four. Yes, sir. That's where uh, we are dealing with. Something else somebody could propose down the road in those units number five, six, seven, eight in the future, or something else comes up later, that is a uh, separate uh, issue. Uh, I, uh, I understand your uh, genuine, genuine, genuine concerns, but uh, my thing is, uh, over here, this is not something new or it's not going to start in three months, so we can stop. This is something operated 
being operated over there for years. And uh, if yes, we are saying one side uh, to say no, go uh, with the staff's recommendation, what will happen uh, to them? So that's, that's where it's, uh, it's not that uh, we are or I'm trying to take any of uh, the right away from you or from your business. I fully understand uh, uh, where what, you're coming from. What you are referencing, sir, is that my business is currently compliant. And the proposed use, which is also an existing use, is currently not compliant. And by making this use compliant, I become non-compliant. It's that simple. If I may uh, sure. comment, just to address that comment, it's our submission that the use that's legally operating there does not become non-compliant. I believe um, zoning already addressed that. Our use is non-compliant. The uses that are there legally are compliant, cannot yeah. be taken away. Um, and I, I do appreciate uh, the committee's uh, comments. I just, if I may, just add final comments or, or uh, responses with respect to uh, the temporary location. I don't want to uh, mislead, rather, the committee. Uh, we will endeavor uh, to look for a temporary location. However, as, as you've heard from the client, they have tried that for a number of years. Uh, and so if we come back in a month or two or three, I'm not sure if that's, um, that, I'm not saying that we won't do that, but I can't, uh, you know, uh, say that that's going to happen. They are focusing on uh, a different location. And in terms of uh, addressing the issues that have been raised with, with um, the two objectors, that is what our clients have endeavored to do and will continue to do. They want to be a good neighbor. If, if the temporary permission is allowed, they want to, of course, operate um, and, uh, as amicably as they can and be as a good neighbor as they have been and will continue to be. Um, and so. Uh, I'm in your hands, but I did want to just uh, address those couple of comments. Sure. Any more discussions, comments? Ms. Garzola, please. If I may, for your consideration, and I, I understand committee's discussion and the concern with respect to existing uses and certainly the concerns of the existing legally operating industrial use next door. Um, if you are intending to support the temporary application um, on for however long, I would recommend for the committee's consideration that you include a commission in your decision that the applicant obtain written confirmation from the TSSA to verify that there will be no impact on the continued lawful use of the adjacent property at 42 Wentworth and that sufficient separation distance is in fact maintained between the private school and the uses regulated by TSSA. Because as noted, it's not the city that will declare that used to be in non-compliance. It's potentially the TSSA. And if that's the direction that you're looking to go and you're looking for verification, then you're certainly capable of imposing it as a condition should, should you choose to support the temporary variance. Instead of... Uh well, uh, the gentleman is clear about uh, TSSA uh, uh, condition, but uh, uh, I understand uh, your comment, and thank you, Ms. Corzola, for that. Uh, what I would like to uh, what what I would like to do is uh, to give them whatever the minimum time uh, the committee feels is appropriate for them to go ahead. Uh, that's my personal uh, wish. Uh, if committee feels uh, some other alternate options uh, by deferring uh, something better can be uh, uh, something better to achieve, uh, then uh, you're more than welcome to propose any suggestion. suggestion, which I think is, is a great one, but um, what if there is an impact? What if TSA, TSSA uh, in fact still has a problem? We've now rendered a decision. Um, how, would, how would that play out? The decision would be conditional upon them clearing that condition. If they cannot clear that condition, then the decision obviously would not be in effect. 
sorry, was that? Uh, mm -hmm. I, like, uh, I think Mr. Burwell's uh, suggestion is a very good suggestion. To? Uh, to make the decision pending on the, uh, on the TSSA clearing the other business. I can live with that in my conscience, otherwise I wouldn't be able to live on If we are uh, going to defer, for example, uh, what the time frame uh, no. would the committee suggest? Sorry? There's no deferral. No deferral. We would grant to the other business. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We would grant conditional use for two years as long as the TSA approves the other business. My struggle over here is we grant three years with TSSA condition and TSSA comes back with something and we had to back to where we started. I the problem is again the future mm -hmm. of the kids. Yeah, it's the future of the kids through you, Mr. Chair, but it's Our, the future of the business. So I'm I'm prepared and I'm sorry that I'm interrupting yeah. you, but I am prepared to propose a motion to and, do uh, if my colleagues are okay with it. And uh, that would be that we uh, Mr. Kurz, I'm sorry. I waiting. Uh, I will through you, Mr. Chair. I do have a number of other recommended conditions. If you are putting a motion on the table, if you're interested in in hearing them, should you choose to move forward with an approval today, there are obviously a number of other conditions that, based on discussions, I would like you to consider as part of that approval. Are you okay with that? Yes. So the first being that the place of worship and private school shall be approved for a temporary period and then certainly whatever period that you feel is appropriate at this point in time, I've suggested um, that shall not extend beyond August 31st, 2021, which is a date that I heard from committee. And then certainly number two, that a building permit be obtained for the change of use within 90 days of the committee's decision. Number three, that the building shall not be occupied or used until such time as, an oc as occupancy has been granted by the building department. Number three, that the private school shall only operate from within unit four, being the unit that is closest to Deerhurst Drive. And that number five, that there shall be a maximum of 250 students. I did hear the committee discuss that they would like to see no further increase in the number of students. Um, and then of course the condition associated with the TSSA confirmation that this approval will have no impact on the continued legal operation of the business next door, and then the final default condition that failure to comply with and maintain shall render this decision null and void. Okay, so uh, any other comment? Ms. Uh, you, Chair. Um, a question to the applicant only because you may have some experience with TSSA. Uh, in terms of requesting um, clarification from TSSA, how lengthy is that process? Is that uh, a week or could it potentially be a few months? You know what, I'm not quite sure. We, we've been involved with a matter similar in Mississauga. Um, and I, I don't know in terms of what specifics they'd require. I'm hoping, I don't know if a week would, would suffice, but uh, given that there's the uh, provincial government, so I, we, these things may take some time. So I would say at least a few weeks at minimum to provide the information. There may be some, I don't know if we'd need to retain a consultant to do a study of that sort. You know, I don't know the extent of it, but, uh, uh, and again, the issue is they're operating out of a, a building which is condom condominiumized. We, we never dealt with that. Uh, although I submit it's still a separate unit, but it would take at least a few weeks, I, I'd say. But, um, and then just a further clarification, if we are requesting TSSA approval, um, I'm wondering who would undertake this because I'm a little concerned that we ask a business that is compliant um, to undertake that. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, so, we, yeah. we, would, we would do that. We would definitely take that on, work with the uh, consultants or whoever is required to figure that in. But we would take on that ownership. So, uh, what is the final, any other question by any committee members? If not, uh, uh, what could be the final uh, wording as, um, as Ms. Corazola said, if the committee wishes, uh, wish like to go that way or if uh, 
back to the lawyer. Uh, if that, uh, if you're okay with that uh, being put forward, that condition. I think there is a concern with respect to occupancy. Um, I don't know if yeah. you want to speak to that, but yeah. so basically, I mean, I people. think uh, from what the staff they're saying is we can't occupy the building until we get an occupancy permit, and uh, it goes back to the same thing where on the road, if that's the case, we've been occupying for ten years. Um, Hopefully we're doing things right, and but we'll work with staff to get an occupancy permit as soon as possible. And, but to, to kind of go on a road from all of a sudden overnight, it, it makes it very difficult for us. So we give us some time to do that. We will work with them to whatever they require to get it, get that. Through you, Mr. Chair, for the committee's consideration, I can confirm that they have been issued an order to cease the use and not occupy the building and obtain a building permit. To allow occupancy of a building that hasn't been granted occupancy would be a violation of the building code. This committee would have no authority to grant a continued violation of the building code, and the building division would obviously proceed in accordance with whatever regulatory mandate that they have. The condition was simply put there as an alert to the, the tenant who's currently occupying the space that it continues to be a violation of the building code. Any other comment, question, concern? Then motion is, uh, the floor is open for the motion. Uh, what my personal uh, suggestion in this point is, uh, if we need more clarity for uh, TSSA thing, uh, I'm okay if uh, we can, if you need deferral, even though I do not really believe we're gonna achieve something, but again, for more clarity on, on that one, is all good for me. Uh, if not, uh, the floor is open for the motions. Or if we want to defer to probably three meetings from now uh, to get some more, get some more uh, thing and um, uh, get some more information. And uh, by the time we come, uh, probably three meetings from now, uh, I'm sure we don't need to have this much discussion as it's already been discussed, and we can. Probably go more. Well, through you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't think that if we defer this for another three meetings, that that the issues are going to change. I think that we need to deal with it today, and uh, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, what I am proposed, uh, what I was proposing, and what I was afraid of was of uh, impacting on somebody else's business. So I am prepared to, to put a motion forward if my colleagues and if you through me, Mr. Chair, if we are all in agreement that we ex that uh, we through uh, that we let the school operate for an extra two years pending all the proposals that were put through Mr. Grizolas, Mr. Grizolas, um suggestions and uh, if in my view if TSSA says that it's a no then you know it, it's a no and but of course all not that all the other suggestions and all the other askings are important they are they're all very important but in my conscience and in my view it's very important that this is looked at on um, not having any impact on any other businesses in the neighborhood. So two years plus all the other conditions as imposed. Uh, if you are putting uh, that uh, as a motion, uh, I, uh, I would like to have more clarity on it. Uh, sure. But uh, what, my, uh, what my suggestion is, if we have a secondary to the exact motion, then for sure we can move ahead with it. Uh, my personal opinion is uh, I do agree with you, and I'm, I, I understand that all four of us is trying our best to find a solution which is, works for everybody. Uh, even though uh, we could have uh, some, uh, some different uh, uh, opinion on few uh, items or few questions, but at the same time, what we are trying here to achieve 
uh, and goal, a win-win situation for everybody. So, uh, sorry. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair, if I may, I just wanted to, you know, the applicant does prefer deferral to diligently try to get an answer on the TSSA issue, uh, because if it's approved with conditions today and uh, we're not able to meet those, 250 students are out. Um, and I know you're, you're, it's a difficult decision, you're considering 250 students versus uh, surrounding businesses. Um, however, if we are able to um, indulge you in a few more weeks to be able to perhaps clarify that, and I'm not sure if the applicant would agree, I don't have instructions on this, but get a D6 guideline a consultant, which we've uh, consulted before in other matters, to perhaps provide you with more information. Um, I think that, that would be our position, but again, we're in your hands as to uh, what you see fit. Okay, uh, Ms. Uh, Marcus suggested something. Do we have, uh, uh, not exactly uh, the motion, but uh, if someone is having the similar thoughts or uh, the thoughts are what my position is if we defer to two to three meetings. And meantime, I would love to look up more information regarding TSSA, or I would, uh, if I'm in position to talk to staff about this, or if staff can find something more uh, okay, so uh, it's three uh, motions from three sides. Uh, motion put forward by Mr. Power uh, to defer three meetings, uh, seconded by uh, seconded by uh, Ms. Ruffler. Before I uh, call, uh, go into the voting, uh, I'm sure uh, all parties understand what we are trying to achieve. So the three meetings uh, would be. I'd like to add something to that, if it's okay. If uh, the TSSA still be consulted so that we have more information at the next time mm -hmm. that this comes before us, because that's vital. That we I guess uh, I, 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 uh, I understand, uh, Ms. Marcus, uh, with respect, uh, respectfully, your intent, and that's my intent as well. Okay. But uh, I don't think so if we can uh, limit the deferral motion uh, with uh, something attached into it. We can, uh, of course, we all know why we are looking for another date, but uh, that's where my struggle is. Maybe Ms. Myers can uh, suggest a deferral motion is simple deferral motion, right? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if we're deferring it for three meetings right now, I just need to know which date we're going to be considering. Um, and I don't think we should be attaching conditions to okay. a different yeah. Okay. So what are, uh, if you can please suggest, uh, what could be the three meetings from now? So as of today's date, we, we are looking at July 30th, August 20th, September 10th, October 1st, uh, September 10th. Uh, July, August, no, September 10th is more closer. But do we have another one in end of September? October 1st. Excuse me, through you, Mr. Chair, following okay. September 10th, the next meeting is October 1st. Okay, so we are in July, I guess. Yeah, September 10th is okay. September 20th, or the following one, yeah. September 20th should be enough. No, sorry. 10th. 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 Yeah. September 20th. Okay, so, uh, Ms. Power, September 10th. Seconded by Ms. Stoffler, September 10th. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. And I specifically want to thank to both the neighbors for coming forward and bringing their valuable concerns. Have a good day. Recalling application A191089030 McBean Drive. Through the chair, we're recalling application A19108. Property is located at 9030 McBean Drive. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Jonathan Raposo, and the uh, authorization on the application. Okay. 
Anything uh, you want to add about your uh, application? Or? Um, no, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just an, uh, it's an extension uh, to permit the continued use of an existing uh, sales pavilion for new homes. Okay. Well, committee members, any question or uh, uh, concern or any comment at this time? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience uh, wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff is of the opinion that the application A19-108 is supportable, subject to five conditions. Condition number one, that the proposed variance be allowed for a temporary period of three years from the final date of uh, committee's decision or until all dwelling units under draft plan of, of subdivision 21T-17015B are sold, whichever comes first. Condition number two, that the owner shall obtain site plan approval for the temporary sales office, including amending the existing temporary structures agreement. Condition number three, that the owner provide securities in the amount of $40,000 to ensure the removal of the sales office parking areas, temporary access, and all associated signage and flags. Uh, condition number four, that all signage associated with the use be in accordance with the sign bylaw, and no signs shall be displayed or installed until such time as the appropriate permits have been issued. And lastly, that uh, the, their failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. Thank you. Thank you. So you understand and accept these conditions? Yes. Okay, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion put forward with staff recommendation by Ms. Doppler, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? It's approved. Thank you. and the property is located at number 10, Cadetta Road. Good day, I'm Ron Michelangelo, I'm 752, <coughs> and I'm the property owner and the applicant. Okay, sir, would you like to add something else beside the application put forward? No. Basically, my desire is to uh, conduct an auto repair facility in my building. Okay, sure. Uh, any comment, concern, question by the committee members? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Staff have reviewed this application and are in support of it, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Number one, that there be no expansion to the building. Number two, the limited site plan application be submitted and approved and implemented within 120 days of the committee's final decision or within an extended period of time as approved by the Director of Development Services upon receiving a request from the applicant. The extent of the, of the site plan review shall be generally limited to matters related to access, vehicular circulation, parking areas, and demarcation of the motor vehicle repair use. Number three, that the extents of the variance be limited to what is identified on the public notice. And finally, number four, that failure to comply with and maintain these conditions shall render the variance null and void. Okay, uh, sorry, you understand and accept these conditions by staff? I understand. Um, just on the number two, mm -hmm. uh, notwithstanding the 120 day period that I would create a submission, for it also the study. says uh, direct, uh, at the uh, discretion of Director of Development uh, uh, Services. So if you need extra time, it's uh, Director of Development Services. Uh, Maybe I would need a little extra time, but notwithstanding that timeline, is my a green light to reach out to the other agencies that are relevant to start up of a new business? Uh, for example, the agency OMVIC, and uh, MTO and uh, the city licensing for garage. I, all of I, that. I, I understand. Uh, right. what, Put those steps in motion yep. in the meantime. So I guess, uh, Ms. Corazola, once 
uh, the gentleman startup. has the conditional approval by the city. That, if, uh, I, I'm not sure if you can answer, but can. Uh, if that, sorry? Through you, Mr. Sure. Chair, I, I can certainly answer that question. The, con the decision would mm -hmm. be conditional upon approval of or clearance of condition two. So in fact, it does not come into force and effect until all of these conditions have been cleared. So zoning services staff would not be in a position to stamp a license for the use of this property as motor vehicle repair until the site plan has been approved. If this is in fact a condition of the approval of this decision to allow this use in an existing building. Um, if you choose to, to, to maintain this condition as recommended by planning staff, um, we will not be able to clear the application for either compliance with the zoning bylaw for OMVIC purposes or licensing purposes. Comment? Okay, I guess my committee members are tired like me after discussing the previous application. But anyway, uh, so your concern is till you get, uh, uh, like whether you can start the I process? I don't know how long the other side of that procedure takes place. I can be quick and put together a proposal and put it in their hands. How long does it, their side take to approve? I guess, uh, whatever the time in general takes, uh, once you, it's, uh, if, if you are submitting everything it required, uh, maybe. I understand I need to hire a professional to create this. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Uh, site plan. I don't think proposal. so. Uh, anyone can answer any specific uh, property or any specific time, but in general, maybe normally how long it takes. Uh, um, Through the chair. It's identified as a limited site plan application, which can be un done, uh, completed online, and it's typically uh, about two to three weeks in terms of turnaround approval process. So um, depending as to how long it takes the applicant to send in a complete application and for us to review it, but uh, we've made it such that it is a limited site application, and we've also uh, limited the, uh, the extent of, of, the, of our review. So uh, in our opinion, this was uh, a limited and we feel that it's appropriate in terms of uh, the applicant, the application before us. Okay, so I'm prepared to do that diligence on my part. So you're okay and understand yeah. and accept these conditions? Yeah. Again, if you need Let's more time, it. it's uh, uh, the clause says itself that you can have more time. But I guess, I don't think so it's gonna take more time on your end. No, I'm gonna be fast. Okay, that's okay. good. That's good. So if no further business committee members would like to move uh, ahead, motion to approve with staff's recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Toffler. All in favor? Thank you. I don't think so. Any other application uh, we have, thankfully. Uh, if not, uh, motion, uh, uh, mo motion to uh, adjourn by... Ms. Marcus, seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? This meeting has been adjourned.